On this episode of Hustle Culture, in today's episode, Abraham, Tyrell, and we're just going to continue to level up to be a true master. All right, welcome to another Hustle Culture podcast. It's your favorite podcast host, Andres Taglia Ferro, and I'm here with some very amazing people today that I'm very excited about. Um, before we really get into it, I just want to address the obvious. Yes, this is a new format. This is the new Hustle Culture format. We got four mics, four people. Just more engaging conversation. It's going to be great. Uh, I'm going to do a more formal introduction, but first I want to introduce my amazing guest. We'll go from this end to that end, and I want you to say your name and what you do for a living and kind of what your end goal in life is. I'm captured by Jacob. I am a Dallas photographer slash creative. Uh, my end goal just inspire people, just mm. leave a uh, tra- trademark or something, you know? Let's go, baby. Well, uh, starting on a very deep note, I mean, <laughs> what what you want to do with your life? What's your end goal? Um, <laughs> end goal is to die. Start with your name. My end goal is to die peacefully, by the way. Ooh. Like, that's pretty Ooh, broad by my end that's goal. That's a good one. But uh, my name is Leo, uh, Leonardo Saint. Um, for a living, I do a few things. I'm a master of none, and I do a lot. Mm. Um, but... You know, I am a jack of all trades. I've worked in a lot of creative fields, and I also work with sales management and development in a few companies. Um, and like I said, I just want to die peacefully and happy. That's fire. That's my end goal. <laughs> Let's go. Dang, how do you follow that? <laughs> uh, my name is Cadell. You know, I'm a, an artist here in Dallas, Texas. And, uh, my end goal, honestly, is just to be different and inspire people doing what I love, you know, and just being successful more so than just, you know, Famous and known, but successful at whatever I do. So, yeah. Let's go. That's fire. Y'all Snaps. heard that? He throwing bars in the beginning. What'd you say? You nah, said, man. I want to be successful. Yeah, I like I how my voice got so though. deep. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you yeah. were, you were future on us, bro. You said, <laughs> I just want us. He, he's going to hit us with, I just want to be successful. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. What's that one with ambition? Oh, that sounds oh, yeah. fire. Oh, yeah. All right. Dang. But, anyways. Throwbacks. <laughs> so, Leo, if you guys are, you know, fans of the podcast, you would know that Leo has had a, an episode before. Uh, it's episode eight. Uh, if you haven't listened to it, y'all should go listen to it. You'll get a more deep dive on who Leo is. I plan on doing some individual ones with Jacob and Cadell as well. Um, but that'll come down uh, this path. Some some things that I want to talk about before we really get started. Uh, some questions you're probably asking yourself is, one, are you going to do any more individual podcasts, like one-on-one? yes. We're still going to do it, but I just spent a lot of money on all of these <laughs> microphones, so I'm going to use them, all right? Um, Gotta show them off. Bro, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, no, nah, but yeah, it, that will happen. Um, you know, I've been saying this is like season two, but uh, that doesn't mean that the other stuff is over. It just means we're incorporating this kind of, uh, you know, environment into the rotation of podcasts. Uh, I'm still going to do one-on-ones when the opportunity comes up, uh, but... I don't know about y'all, but when I listen to podcasts, I like when there's like three people, there's mm. like four people. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? There's this other one called Fresh and Fit. There's like 12 people. I don't know if I can go that Logan far. Logan Paul's. Logan Paul, you got, yeah. You know what I mean? But this is nice. We're going to have a nice conversation. We got, you know, with this, I had to organize a little bit. I couldn't just go off the cuff because we would never end. <laughs> so I put, you know, a few little things. We're going to venture here. We're going to venture some other places. Uh, but all in all, it's going to be a cool vibe. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're sipping on some some good stuff that is gonna go unannounced. Some holy stuff. Yeah. Some. Sparkling what do you say? Water. Some holy stuff. No. Some so holy water. That's my beverages. Yes, holy oh. water is my beverages. So he does okay. Like I do. Well, we'll talk <laughs> about that later. We're gonna talk about that later. All right. Uh, but man, so. Uh, you know, I really wanted to touch on a couple of things. You know, this is Hustle Culture. If you're new here, uh, this ain't just another random podcast where we just chop it up. Um, I mean, we will, but it's not just that. We, we want to inspire people. Our message here is to inspire and empower people to do what they love. Uh, so I want to kind of deep dive into your guys' story a little bit um, and kind of what you guys do on a day-to-day. You've kind of introduced yourself as your main thing. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna, I want to ask some questions here that, are, you know, I want everyone to put their input on. It doesn't have to go in that order. You know, if you, oh, yeah. if you think of it first, say it. Raise your hand, teacher type style. Or? You know, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> Buzzer word. <laughs> yeah, buzz. I'd, be, I'd be the type of teacher. I'd, I'd be the type of teacher that would like get mad at you for raising your hand and yeah. just not calling you. So don't do that. Um, but uh, the the first question I really had for you guys uh, is: Is entrepreneurship the best option for creative individuals? Now, I wanna I wanna give a little bit of context to this. Um, the reason I was asking this question is because I have recently made the transition from being completely self-employed entrepreneur to I, I'm, I'm an in-house creative at a, at a place. So my mindset, you know, when you're creative, you kind of go your whole time like, you know, I, this is the only way to do it. 
You know what I mean? You only have to hustle. You only have to do entrepreneurship thing. Uh, there's ways to hustle within, you know, jobs and doing side hustle and all that. So I kind of want to dive into that, but I want to know y'all's personal takes on this subject. Is entrepreneurship, you know, the only like way to grow as a creator? I mean, I can speak, speak for one. I'm not uh, paying my bills and supporting my wife and my dogs and my cat and my turtle <laughs> with uh, a sole creative entrepreneurial role. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Yeah. But I also think that we limit ourselves imagining that entrepreneurship is the only route for creatives. Mm-hmm. I think it is a route if that's your goal. But speaking from a creative aspect, are we all very good with money? A lot of creatives aren't. Are we all good with organization? A lot of creatives aren't. And so look to Hollywood, right? Mm. Creatives are usually the actors. They're the directors. They're all these things, but they work within a company. They work work within an org that has a not creative perspective, but a more business aspect in mind behind it to facilitate their creative vision. And that's how it was. I mean, if you look at Roman times even, I want to go historical on you. You had the people funding money behind it, right? Mm -hmm. You look at even uh, Leonardo da Vinci. You look at the Renaissance. You had the churches and the people with money in the banks funding these artists to make their work. Right. So really, yeah, they were entrepreneurs, but they were working on their own stuff, mm-hmm. and they were funded by people that had business mindsets. They weren't really entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. They were just creatives. So I think that creatives 100% don't need to be entrepreneurial. Yeah. I think that the chase behind entrepreneurship has put a lot of creatives in bad positions but because then they, they think the only way I can be a photographer, the only way I can do this, or the only way I can be a creative is if I go full head in, open my own agency, do my own things. Mm -hmm. But it's not the case. You could work for an organization. You could find a dope creative position. You could be a creative director at a company that's not a creative, you know, directed company and not be the sole owner, right? right? And still put out great work. Nike is not a creative company, right? Mm -hmm. By by inherit, it's a clothing company, right? And yet they put out some creative work. Adidas, all these places, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think you have to be an entrepreneur. I think that's a closed mindset. Right. There's way more space in the other fields where you can bring your creativity and be an asset somewhere mm. versus trying to say, I think it's too much ego. It's that pride, real, yeah. that chip on your shoulder where like I have to do it on my own. And it's like, no, you don't. You could be an artist at a label and you're not the entrepreneur. You're Obviously you have a hustle. It doesn't discredit from your hustle. Or you can be a photographer at a dope agency doesn't take away from your hustle. doesn't take away from your grind. You're still putting out work. Or you could be a creative. I'm not sure exactly what perspective on the company you're doing, but you're creative at a company, yeah. the first of their position. Right. Push a company into the place where, hey, we're going to make a, a position just for you. Mm. And you're going to build this now being the first. And you can build a whole department for yourself yeah. and be your own hustler in terms of having, you know, five years from now, having a whole team behind you. That's real. right. Yeah. That's not a hustle. That's not a grind. I, I think that's discrediting what you're doing now you know yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, i think you just got to find the best lane for yourself like you had to come to yourself and say hey do i want to be like this business-minded focus be like hey or some people can't do that some people are not strong at doing that and you just got to come in terms with yourself saying hey am i actually this or am i just want to focus on being creative and just all that so this is really focusing on who you want to be yeah yeah and be honest with yourself too I agree with everything they said, but, um, yeah, and don't be afraid to like work with people also. Um, cause you know, a lot of times people think, Oh, I can just do it alone. And you know, I'm the lone wolf or whatever, which is cool. Some people have the talent and ability to do everything on their own. But you know, if you have someone in your, you know, your circle, who's able to help you to get to a spot where, you know, I guess you can succeed in a better way and yeah. be more creative, definitely go for that. Um, cause Working with people honestly helps you get to that place as well. So, and plus, too, at the end of the day, you cannot do it by yourself. Mm, that's, Especially that's in real. this day and age, yeah, you yeah, cannot yeah. do it by yourself. Collaboration is so key, and yeah. I think that people forget that, mm-hmm. or they think they have to not collaborate because it's to cool. prove themselves, yeah, or cool. to prove themselves. Yeah, right? They're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Like, it's a chip in the shoulder. It's that like yeah, th- that yeah. ego where it's like, man, if I work with with on, you know, with, with tags, I'm losing who I am. No, you're mm. not, bro. That's where you get to work off each other, feed off each other, and do more yes. together, right? And none of these places that are, none of these groups that are doing big things, Hollywood, there's crews. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, like bro. Nike is a full team, yeah. not just on one team, <laughs> teams of contracted yeah. teams. <laughs> like, yeah, bro, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, not only is it you and that little team, you're also contracting a lighting guy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, But one of the things 
you know, for me personally, what I've been kind of going through has been like, as I've been transitioning into this role. So for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, cause you suck. Um, <laughs> basically, <laughs> long story short, facts. um, you know, it's just facts. Or, um, <laughs> what I did is I've, I've been doing, I've been completely self-employed and self-sufficient since January, like officially like LLC. You know what I mean? Killing it. Uh, Nothing crazy, you know what I mean, clearly, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> nothing crazy, but enough to, you know, pay my bills, take yeah. care of my wife, take care of my little dog, you know what I mean, get new equipment. Um, but it got to a place uh, where I was like, you know, I'm owning this agency at 23 years old, and I realized I haven't even worked at one, like at a decent yeah. one, you know what I mean, like at one that like matters. <laughs> and yeah. I, so I was like, dang, you know what, how am I going to think that I can build something if I don't even have a blueprint yeah. for it. Like, the only blueprint mm-hmm. I have was a church. <laughs> yeah. Like, that ain't the best blueprint <laughs> to build something, you know what I mean? No facts. So, you know, that's kind of been what I've been walking through is just learning that. And one really good depiction of that and kind of this contrast between the entrepreneur and then the person who allows himself to work with somebody is Joe Budden versus mm-hmm. Charlemagne the God. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. I'm sure we've all... We all know who Joe Biden is. We all know who Shala is. Some egos clashing. Right no there. facts. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. But I mean, it's it's the dichotomy of, you know, one guy who wants to do it all by himself. Yeah. And thinks that he's too good to work with any organization. And another guy who's found a way to finesse every organization into building his vision. And I'm sure he's not even trying to finesse. I'm sure he's literally just wanting to collab. Yeah. But, you know, there's a different level of leadership when yeah. you're actually leading <laughs> as opposed to leading yourself and like two people. You know yeah. what I mean? I think there's the uh, selfish person and then there's a leader. People mm-hmm. think that you're a leader because you don't need other people. That's not the case. A leader understands, uh, I mean, you know, from my other podcast, from our podcast, but I worked at Tesla, mm-hmm. right? Elon Musk says himself, he's, I didn't go to Harvard. I don't know how to build a rocket ship. I don't know this, but I hire the people that went to Harvard to build it mm-hmm. and talk to any actual boss. Not someone who says, oh, I'm a boss in their bio, mm-hmm. but an actual <laughs> boss. And they say, I don't know how the hell my workers do these things. Facts. <laughs> but I get Facts. the right people to do it. Yeah. You know, and I get the right people together. So I get someone who knows how to build SpaceX, for example, right? With Elon. Mm. You get someone who knows how to do this, this part, and this part. Cool. Let's put it all together. Sweet. Now we have a rocket ship that can go to space. Or now I don't robots. need to know how to do everything, right? Imagine if Elon was like, no, nah, I'm going to do it on my own. He would never be where he's at. He's building yeah. a freaking robot now. You know, like he's gonna, hey, he's yo. a mad scientist. Like, you need to, to that chill level, with that, bro. You know? I robot all over again. But, but, <laughs> oh, Will, Smith po- when he, Will Smith posted that. I oh that's the first God, thing that came to mind. Bro. I was like, oh, yeah, well, I, I robot 100%. But like, you don't get that type of level of influence if you don't collaborate mm. and you don't bring other people. And I think, especially in the creative field, mm. I think it's, I must sound like my mom, the work at the enemy. Mm. Right, but it's 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 it doesn't it's counterculture. Yeah. It doesn't help the culture. It doesn't help the creative community by being having an ego, being too prideful to work with other people to admit, hey, bro, I don't know how to draw. You know how to draw? Sweet, I have a merch idea. Yeah, that we're gonna draw this. This is my vision. Can it's you help me make it reality? Head. And let's split the let's split the diff. Yeah, like what's your work? What's my work? Cool. Let's let's make a collaboration together. Versus like now nah, I'm gonna learn how to draw. No, nah, bro, I don't. I'm never gonna know how to draw. That's just my thing. You know, like, that's not my thing. I'm going to learn how to do other things and focus on my craft. I might get some from you, mm-hmm. which is dope. But when I need to draw, like, I'm going I'm to call you. When I need a photographer, I'm going to call you. When I need music, I'm never going to learn how to rap. This is not going to happen. <laughs> Just not going to happen. But if I need I an Google artist, my bar. you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it would be ignorant of me to be like, man, I need a dope beat on my, on my, for my podcast. I'm going to do it myself. Hell no. I'm going to get someone who does it, yeah, right? Right, right? And work yeah. together and collaborate. That's like the idea. Yeah. If I need a plumber, I get a plumber. I'm not going to yeah. do it myself. And it's so much easier, <laughs> too. That's the easier definition of a leader, you know? Because it's like, you can't do it alone. If you're a leader, you have to lead someone, you know? You have to yeah. have people around you. So it doesn't make sense if you try to do it all by yourself, you know? Uh, that's just someone who's just egotistical. Like, in, If you guys ever play sports, right? Oh, who's yeah. the leader? Not the ball hog. Not the coach's kid either. <laughs> no. <laughs> my bad. This is my past trauma. Yeah, I was about so. to say. You had some experience or talk about it? <laughs> Between church and PKs. Between church God. PKs, God. Pastor kids, and coaches' hey. kids. PKs and CKs, bro. Bro. Hey, I'm my here for God, you. Oh, my God, dude. You want to talk about it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm not sure which. I honestly think I think PKs are worse than CKs, but still. Both yeah, have their I mean, own problems. Amen. Amen. amen to that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the good PKs, though. Shout out to the yeah, good PKs. Good, good PKs are, are dope, you know. <laughs> <laughs> better than average people. If you're out there. And <laughs> For you, though, 
you know, Kadal, what's your what's your thing, man? Because I know as an artist, it's very encouraged to do it yourself. Like, I mean, the whole wave I was brought up on, Chance the Rapper, you know, independent art is the best way to do it. Like, you know, as you come up and as you've been learning, as you've been growing, what's kind of been like your experience with that? Well, honestly, I didn't know what I was doing when I first <laughs> when I first started doing music. Amen. It was all kind of learn as you go. But, um, you know, I look back on it when I was trying to do everything myself and I was like, dang, what, what was I doing? You know, like my content wasn't the best. My songs weren't mixed how I wanted them to be. And uh, looking back on it, it's like, dang, I could have really like reached out to this person and that person. And now, thankfully, I'm able to like have people like yourself and people who are able to like help me and. You know, you just have to, like, humble yourself because a lot of artists, they just, I don't know, not all, but some of them just have that ego, like, that ego that gets in the way of yeah. them, like, succeeding. And they don't want to work with anybody or they just don't want to take, like, advice or, you know, just be teachable. But for me, I'm trying to, like, learn and try to be humble and, you know, continue to grow as yeah. an artist as well as, like, just work with as many people as I can to help me get to that point. So yeah. that's what I've been learning on the way. Student mentality is key, I think, there. Yeah. Like, I think there's a, a saying. I'm going to butcher it, but you're in a dark room. You can't see, right? Mm. But you want to get up this ladder or the staircase to the goal, right? To success, let's say. And every time someone steps on it, it lights up. Mm. Now, a lot of times people are like, well, I'm not going to look at the other person's steps to get up there. Why, bro? Yeah. If you see a staircase and it's dark and you see some staircase lights up, cool. The only obligation that you have as an artist is to learn from the people that came before you, not try to do it on your own, and now take those steps so now you can go further. It's like the same thing when they say stepping on the, or standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Mm. I don't take away from, like, bro, I'm Brazilian American. <laughs> do you think I want to start from how Latinos were treated in America like 60 years ago? Hell no. 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 I'm stepping on their shoulders. <laughs> yeah. They did that yeah. for me. Yeah. I'm not going to be like, man, I got to do it all on my own. I'm going to come true. here on a, on a boat and do it on my own. No, it's bro. Selfish. It's a selfish thing. To it try is to so do. selfish. Yeah. It's, it's discrediting what my mother did, what mm. my grandmother did, what, right. you know, what past artists did. I mean, the fact that hip-hop is number one music is years in the making. Mm. Outkast yeah. had the first top one album, and since then, it's been forever. And only like two years ago did hip-hop become the most popular um, right. music. It was rock forever, Which is right? crazy. Imagine you're like, nah, I'm not going to use that to my own advantage. You'd be stupid. And you'd be discrediting <laughs> the work of people who came before you, like, yeah. especially in the hip-hop Christian aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine you're like, no, nah, I'm not going to credit Lecrae and these people that broke the way for us. Forget Lecrae. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> like, like them or not, they did something for you. I love you, Lecrae, you. if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lecrae, if you're I'm listening, beat it up. Listen to Hustle Culture. Post that you watch that group. Hit my man yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> share and post that you listen to this Please, too. Yes. <laughs> Please notice me. I'm going to post this on TikTok and I'm going to be like, your biggest hater. <laughs> Hashtag tattoo 116 uh, over your neck right now. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Jacob, for you, like... Photography, you're, you're like, so me and, and Leo are, like he said, beautifully, master of none, <laughs> jack of all trades. You're kind of, you've decided to niche down on one thing. Photography mm -hmm. is your main thing. You dabble in graphic design, you dabble in video, but you're aware that photography is your top thing. Mm -hmm. For you, for like, I don't know, it's, it's a little easier for me to want to do everything by myself because I know a little bit of everything. For somebody who knows all about one thing, and you kind of need a designer. You kind of need a video. Like, how does that kind of impact you and the way you work around, like, your projects and all that? So, I feel like since I do, like, lifestyle or, like, creative photography, in a sense, uh, I feel like you need people. Right, right. <laughs> so, like, if I'm doing, like, a creative shoot, I'm going to need a stylist. I'm going to need a model. I'm going to need a makeup artist. I'm going to need... Uh, set designer I'm gonna need so many things and I yeah. feel like you can't do it by yourself at all mm -hmm. I feel like you need to depend on a team get a team together all that that's like a huge key and like trusting other people to do their job too yeah. you know and make friends along the way too next thing you know you guys are doing um what is it called pvp uh I forget what the actual term is um pvc PVC pipes. Yeah. Is like it's like PDF. Yeah. Like, it's, like, it's like uh trade for trade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. trade for trade. Your yeah. oh. your craft for my craft. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so next thing you know, you get a stylist that works for you for free. Next thing you know, you're trading all that. So I networking. feel like yeah, networking. Yeah, yeah. 
So I feel like it's a huge thing in like the photography industry, unless you're doing like landscapes and all that. Right. Then you really don't need anyone in a sense. You literally need people. Yeah. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) That's your subject. (laughs) Oh, dude, I, I envy the people who just take photos of squirrels because like, yeah, it's lit. Bro, I try to I try to get into that. Like when I did photography, I was trying to get into landscapes and it's yeah. just like it looks dope and all. I just couldn't like I love nature. Yeah. But I'd rather be in it. And I just didn't find the the creative push to take photos yeah. of landscapes yeah, and no. to sell it or post it or how to market that. That's the hustle, though. Bro. I was like, yeah. bro, like Chris, um, like Chris Ransby, um, oh, I forget his name. Ah, oh, damn it. Peter McKinnon. Uh, Peter McKinnon. Yes, no. thank you. Oh, shoot, I was getting yeah, it. <laughs> yes, Peter McKinnon. Lit. When he did the bucket Go. shot of, of uh, that w- landed on the Canadian uh, coin. Oh, yeah. That, bro, and, 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 and Banff. And, bro, his nature shots in Canada are amazing. And it's all and timing, too. And I, I would love doing that. But in my mind, I would love doing that with me in front of it, or my wife in front mm. of it, holding her hand, doing the things yeah, that we do. You know, yeah. doing the creative shoot there with people. Yeah. I can't imagine just doing a nature shot. As much as I love the nature, I would rather either not take photography at all, like... Um, when my wife and I do trips, typically we bring a disposable camera mm-hmm. or I bring my film ones mm-hmm. and I develop it later, don't even look at it. And I try to stay off my phone and then just enjoy the moment, mm. which sounds crazy in this day and age. But What's that? that's what we try to do. Um, <laughs> we like we don't go on our phone. Like we did a trip for our birthday and we didn't really use our phones. We were looking back. We, I don't think we have any photos other than a disposable camera. Mm. So I have no idea what the photos are, but like we took someone on a disposable camera um, and I enjoy that. Or if I'm going there for a photo shoot, yeah, in that yeah, mindset, yeah. it's like, all right, I'm going to get... You guys are doing this yeah. dope shoot. I can't think of going somewhere just to take photos. Because then I'm like, bro, I can just Google search that on like yeah. photos of mountains. You know, I, yeah. I just doesn't value to me yeah. for that. Like I give credits, major kudos to who, who can make that as a business. Because I'm like, how? Yeah, I'm the yeah. opposite. Who bro. are you marketing I'm, to? I'm, I'm the girl off that Drake verse on Emotionless. Oh the one that gosh. takes photos in Paris and saves yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish, I wish I was in Paris. But I wish I, mean, I knew hey. the reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wish. Well, I mean, since we're here. Amen. Since we got here. Somehow, as we talk about Drake in that yeah, we've amazing been verse, about it all day. verse of the decade, I'm just playing. Look, emotions are running high. Okay, so are we gonna do it? What's or? the ETA? What's the ETA from the release of Donda? It's been two weeks already. No, no, not two weeks. No, a week uh, and been two a days, week. maybe a week and two days. Yeah, yeah. CLB's been like three days. No, no, it's been five days. Yeah. Okay. So Friday was CLB, and then Sunday, and then and Sunday, Sunday of, was Donda. And Sunday of, of okay. was a Donda. So it's fresh. Fresh. I mean, Donna just came out. Certified <laughs> Lover Boy just came out. Correct. The greatest Drake record of all. No, hey no. Uh, <laughs> don't disrespect Drake. <laughs> like, as much as I'm not a Drake fan, don't no, 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 no. It's, it's top. It's not even top five. Oh, bro. I, I feel disrespected. I don't even like, like Drake. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, if, I, if I was Drake, I would kind of, like, be self-aware and be like, oh bro, this is not God. my top album. Come on. No, bro. So, I mean... So we're we gonna talk about it. We're we gonna, gonna talk, talk about, about it now, bro. I mean, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. we're waiting for the end. Like, we, we brought it up. <laughs> we brought it up. Okay. So if you've been living under a rock, you wouldn't know that the Patrick. two greatest artists of the decade just released albums. And y'all can hate me if you hate me. Yay! Greatest artists ever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Two of the Thank greatest artists. Thank you. Thank you. Kanye. For, I don't know about Drake ever. You know, Michael Jackson's pretty funny. <laughs> but uh, um, look, <laughs> it's been a, it's been a conversation. Donda versus CLB. Donda, <sighs> CLB. Donda, 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 Donda. Donda, Donda, uh, Donda. All right, so I gotta ask y'all. So, can we have a vote before we get into like the topic of well, itself? So I'm split. To be honest, I feel like you can't compare the two. Bro, shut up. All right, no, so anyways, no, 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 no. Just because it's literally two different projects, I feel correct. like it's night and day. <laughs> what Kanye did is never gonna happen ever again. He brought Damn. the mainstream industry, trap artists, pop artists, all that. Talking about God, and I don't think that's ever gonna happen ever again. Uh, he's already done it once. He's gonna do it again. I, I think he's I gonna do know. it all he's the time. He's been doing it his he's, whole career. This he's is only get. he's only gonna do Christian albums. Let's do this. Wait, hold on. Dondo, let me, wait, let Dondo me. CLB. Dude, wait. No, I want y'all to say it first. <laughs> What's your I'm the host. Vote? I get You're the host. Okay. Y'all go first. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say. Like, people probably know who know me. Yep. I'm wearing the Yeezys right now. This oh is, shoot! Just saying. This one is of, a good drink, Elliot. You already finished yours. But it's Donda. It's Donda. Donda's a, <laughs> Donda's a solid 8.5. <laughs> like, I don't think it's his best album by far, <laughs> but Donda is an 8.5. 8.5. CLB, in my opinion, is a 6.57 at best. At best. Like, that's like, my top is 7, okay. but my lowest is 6.5. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a trash album, but for Drake, like, there's... Come on, man. No, like, especially since he said this was, like, his best album. That's valid. He Bro. said that? Yeah. He said that. Yeah, he was oh, he said it was his favorite album, too. Once again, let me, let me just quote him one more time. He said, 
oh, you're a lesbian? I am one too. <laughs> you can't have that on an album and saying that it's your best album ever. I'm just, I'm just saying you can't have that. That's not, that's not acceptable at all. I don't know what to say, how to follow <laughs> that. But um, personally for me, uh, you know, nothing against Drake, you know, certified lover boy. It's cool. Congrats to him. I just think Donda, um, I, I think a lot of artists and producers probably appreciate Donda more only because of like just the art in that album, like what he did and everything that it took, like the engineering, everything, you know, it was like, motion too. yeah, it was like a display of like art and it was amazing. Like, I'm not just trying to ride the Kanye wave, you know, cause I've been listening to Kanye for a long time before everybody got on it, you know, the Kanye wave like two years ago, but since Pablo, yeah, college dropout, like my favorite Kanye song is family business. Like, mm. yeah, all the way, but no, like, I don't know, like, it's it's kind of, like, it's different for me. I, like Jacob said, you can't really compare the two. Um, Kanye's in a whole different lane, and what mm. he did was amazing. Like, he had all these, like, you know, artists, you know, on there just talking about, like, God and their faith and their struggles, all this stuff. Yeah. I was like, dang, like, that's like that's the Kanye crazy. effect, you know? Yeah. That's wild right there. So. It made artists mad for getting cut in the album. Yeah. Mad, like, want to box upset. him. Like they weren't yeah. in the album. People are angry that they're on the yeah. album. Yeah. Chris Brown is still has beef. Uh, Soldier Boy has beef right now. Yeah. People are angry they're not part of the album. Chris and Brown can sit down somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like bro. Like, yeah. It's, it's it's over. But stop. did you hear the Chris Brown verse? It was fire. No, like, and that's the thing. It's yeah. difficult choices, right? Yeah. It's difficult choices that he had to make to make the album. But I'd like to get your opinion on this because I I don't know where you stand. I have a feeling where you stand, but like I can't. It does not fathom Aren't to you me that people think fan? that CLB is honestly better than Donda. Aren't you a Drake fan? I don't hate it either. I don't get it. Zoom in. <laughs> close up, close up. Camera one on the on is it on me? On tags. It's on me. <laughs> it's camera on tags. <laughs> it's Make on me. Yeah, My screen sure? face activated. Zoom shout in. Out, shout out Chips, bro. He's back there doing his work. I, I, I can't compare them, bro. Now, nah, CLB. Okay, so <laughs> let me give you some context. I, I built up the tension just because oh, yes. it's fun. But uh, no, so Donda, like you said, is a masterpiece. Okay. CLB. It's just another record for Drake, mm -hmm. where he just had fun on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? He spit some bars. Captions. I will say... Captions. Captions. <laughs> a lot of cat lesbian. No. <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, no, for real, though, I think Kanye... So, the thing about me, I didn't grow up on Kanye. Mm -hmm. I started, like, actively listening to Ye. Like, I listened to, you know, Stronger. You know, those the hits, you know. Like the, the basic hits? Yeah, the basic hits. Radio hits, yeah. I listened yeah. to, you know... Uh, Watch the Throne, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. I listen to like you know those big singles. You know, Brothers in Paris. You know what mm -hmm. I mean. Brothers in Paris. Brethren. Good catch. Good catch. Brethren. Brethren in Paris. I like to say ninjas because oh, yeah. you just don't like ninjas. But I like, I like the brothers. <laughs> I don't even want to. I don't even want to get close. Brothers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. Um, guys. But I didn't. I didn't like. I was the time that I started paying attention was Life of Pablo. Mm. And that was like I would honestly say the same. A lot. I didn't grow up a Kanye person. See now Drake. I was listening to since NBA 2K11 mixtape. Yeah. You know I just went into so Yeah. <laughs> so so hey, I ain't gonna lie. That went hard. That went so hard when you were like, I was like, I was gang time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Bro. So. Put on I, a headband. <laughs> so that was my thing. That was, Drake was my guy. So just setting that up to say, when I first listened to Donda, I was like, ain't no way Drake is topping this. Mm. Musically, I mean, I've been, my all my families are my whole family's musician. So, like, I really admire good production, composition. The the, the way he simplifies music mm -hmm. and somehow complicates it at the same so time. You, yeah. So, you loved it the first listen? I loved Don. Okay. Now, the first track threw me off. I didn't know about, you know, the yeah. beautiful... Context, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> then I found out and I was, like, moved by it. But, yeah, bro, like, are you kidding me? The, the way that Kanye flowed on that drill beat. Oh, off the grid? Mm. Off the grid. Off the grid. grid he acted grid. like he just from the UK for no reason. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> so every track was there was stupid. fire. I didn't have a skip. I had like a couple that I was like, like uh, Junior was like whatever. I didn't like mean. the Pop Smoke one. Pops, well, yeah. Yeah, because that, 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 that was like an interlude. Yeah. I think it was, been cut. those are like creative choices that he chose, mm -hmm. Yeah, but aren't songs that are taken to a serious level. Those are just yeah. creative choices to include them as like, Intermission yeah. type moments type thing. Yeah, I was honestly disappointed. Like it's Kanye, bro. You know how to get this record. You know how to get the track. Why are yeah. you dubbing it? Whatever. Um, but yeah, so I thought Kanye was a masterpiece. Okay, I was like, there's no way Drake is beating this. 
And if he does, it's got to be just bars. Because Drake is way better than Kanye when it comes to rapping, in my opinion. Right. He can rap his butt off. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> then CLB dropped. Off the first listen, I thought Drake won. Yeah. Like. The first track was fire. Bro, Champagne Poetry. poetry. <laughs> oh, hold on, I got to pull it up. Hold on. Champagne Poetry hit. Poppy's Home hit. Girls Want Girls was like a vibe, but I yeah, I think my it's th- a vibe. I mean, it's not nothing crazy, but I think it's a vibe. Mm. It was a vibe. It was cool. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm listening to all this. You know, Love All with Jay Z, the Travis Scott one. Travis Scott, like there were so yeah, but many. Travis Scott's Drake. always great though. If Travis Scott's on a track with yeah. either Ye or or Drake, it's yeah, gonna be a, it's gonna be a especially the beat change and everything. <laughs> oh my and it was so slow; it wasn't yeah. instant. I, and I also it's a freaking Astro World yeah. vibe too. I was like, oh I love God. that. I, love I can't wait till he drops. So I'm listening to this, and I'm like, bro, ain't no way, <laughs> ain't no way that 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 people think that. And at first, I feel like that was like public opinion. Like it was either the super stands that were like, yeah, 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 yay, <laughs> Donda, 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 Donda. But then mo- I feel like most people were like, oh, Drake. I listened to it again. Mm. Second listen, I started, you know, picking it out, realizing how out like, of the hype he was, you know, half-assing most of the verses. There we go. Jay Z destroyed him on his own verse, but mm-hmm. he got a better Jay Z verse, I think, mm. than Jay. Oh no, For way sure. better. You know I think mean? the song Jail was better than the song Love All. I think the verses were better on that. That's where the yeah. song Jail is a better anthem type yeah, song. I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, which better. one do you want to listen to, like, back to back? Jail. Yeah. But then, you know, lies, you know, like, yeah. you can't, you know? So it's like, it was weird. And I, my favorite comedian, Andrew Schultz, he posted this. He was like, Donda's better musically, CLB's better. Pure Rap lyrics. Wise. Yeah, Drake's you know. a better rapper. Uh, I think he posted, Drake is a better rapper. Kind of makes better music. I wish they two would clap. And I wish they exactly. would Exactly. If they had a, like originally planned, I think a couple years back when Pablo dropped, mm-hmm. they were going to do an album called Wolves. That's when he made the song Wolves. If they had made a Wolves album with Drake and Kanye, Kanye producing, like the Watch the Throne, but with Drake and Kanye, yeah. it would be it would be done for. Bro, so so Andrew Schultz in the podcast That's today. a dream. Do we deserve that? No. <laughs> Bro, I, like in an alternate universe, there, there is that. And then after that, the world ended because like there's nothing else to, because to, that is such a great, like it's, once again, Watch the Throne was a gift. That was the same year as Dark uh, Twisted Fantasy and Kanye, once again, just a super Kanye stand here. He beat himself for, for, for a Grammy. Yeah. He was competing against himself for a Grammy. Yeah. So he won while losing at the same time. One of the few <laughs> artists that's ever done that. That's insane. Yeah. That's why he has, you know, some of the most Grammys than any other artist, right. but just saying for a fact, not to, yeah. <laughs> to stand Drake stands are like, Oh, he has yeah. better records. I think like, he's you know, on Drake, we, of the decade, you know, we'd probably get a, uh, J Cole Mike, and Kendrick. Michael Jackson Vanguard. <laughs> we'll get J Cole and Kendrick before we get, you know, Drake and Kanye. I a hundred percent. Kendrick's going to drop. Kendrick is also a goat. Kendrick is going to murder both of them. Correct. But I do. So let me just say one thing. I don't think that Don is the best album of the year. Just to say for a fun oh, yeah. fact, Tyler definitely had, <sighs> which is going unnoticed. Tyler, the creator had the best album of the year. Was that Igor? No. no. Uh, uh, call me if you get year, lost. Right? Yeah. 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 Call me if you get lost. Yeah, even that was that. a freaking banger. Well, you, oh, you got to listen to it. I'm I super into listen music. To like, I listen That's all with the driver license, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah anyway. I made one of, uh, he had like a whole thing where you can make your own or oh, someone made cool. it. So I always try to do those. Like, did, especially when did you albums. ever watch that interview? Uh, it's him in Hot 97. Which one? Oh, I saw well, the Funk Flex one. Which which one is that one? Don't watch uh, that. The context, the context might help me with that. Uh, was it like recent? Yeah, recent. It was like Probably. this year. I think it's the, the recent one we're talking about. A son too. When you yeah. said if I had a son, I wouldn't yeah. want to have to be a rapper. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Watch that one. He's so Tyler. Smart. So like, He's this so one, I'm hopeful for Tyler because he was influenced by Kanye more than he was Drake. Obviously, because Kanye's older than Drake. That's one thing. Like, I don't. I'm not an anti Drake. It's just that if I were to pick one, it's Kanye. Mm. And I I do believe that Kanye is one of the greatest artists of all time. I've always said it. Like Kanye is my top. Andre 2000, um, Jay Dilla. Uh, I mean, obviously, people like Jay-Z and Nas have their place. And I think Drake has his place. He might surpass Kanye in a certain form because he has more years upon him, yeah. most likely. But Drake doesn't do things creatively. He does things for markability no, and money, which Main is nothing against yeah, yeah. it. I mean, I mean, the like, cover art is just the Exactly. Proof. The markability-wise, like, he, he wins, marketability-wise. Yeah. Drake does things for, like, the moment, but Kanye, you can look back years from now and yeah. be like, dang, oh, yeah. you know, and still be in awe. You know, yeah. I, I'm going to say something that might trigger people, but uh, Nothing Was The Same is, I think, Drake's best album. Oh, I agree. Do you know what outsold it by, like, a lot? I don't have the exact numbers, but I think Nothing Was The Same. Total sales right now is, like, 600,000, 800,000. Total sales. Total. Yeezus, which I don't think is an amazing Kanye this album. It's probably his worst one. It, it, not his worst, I don't think. I, I'm, <laughs> in my opinion, being a Kanye stan. 
it definitely has, there's reasons why it's that way. It's at like over a million. I think a million four, a million three Jeez. total sales. That's saying Drake's best album, which is a masterpiece, right? Is the sales. So I don't accredit sales to like how good someone no, is. Me neither. I don't I credit Grammys. Because if, if you go Grammys, yeah. it's like Jay-Z is better than Kanye. Yeah. Beyonce is better, the best artist in the world because they had the most Grammys. If you go, if you go by money, Kanye is better because he's a billionaire. Yeah. Seven nine, billion dollars. Nine billion. <laughs> you know? So it's like, what are you going to credit to, right? So yeah. just crediting numbers because people use Drake as numbers. I'm like, creatively, Drake is not there. And for me, mm. as a creative, that's why I gravitate to Kanye because I'm like, I just need that creative influence. And truthfully, Kanye's gotten me through moments because he's bipolar. And when I was younger, I was yeah, diagnosed yeah. bipolar. I have a lot of similarities with Kanye. Wow. I do have my ego moments. Right. I do have my down moments. And I feel for him. And he puts it out there. He's open about mm. it. He's expressive. And his Very. music is an expressive branch of his creativity. Drake, I don't feel like there's been moments he's done that. But it's never like an expressive like branch of his creativity. It's all about a play. It's all about the next move. It's all a scheme. Which is fine if that's as prov provocative. I'm not listening to music for a scheme. I'm listening to music for the music, for the emotion, for yeah. the music of it. You know. So, so one of the one of the arguments I saw was Kanye's music evokes emotion, mm. but Drake raps and talks about subjects that make you feel. Like they said that Kanye is like an emotional artist, and then Drake is an aspirational artist. Like when I listen to a Drake song, like most Drake songs, besides. You, you know? be feeling yourself, huh? Bro, like, yeah. it just pumps me up. Like, yeah. champagne poetry, you, you bro? You get hype. And it's not even like it's like XXX Tentacion kind of yeah. getting pumped. It's like a, I'm inspired to get to this. Yeah. But one, one of the things... Luxury my opinion, lifestyle. Exactly. Yeah. My opinion on Drake is I think he stopped being great mm. when he started trying to ride waves of, like, newer artists. Like, when yeah. he dropped that first, that song, what was the guy, like, where they were doing that dance? Oh, Look Alive? Yeah, Look, Look Alive, Alive was the beginning of his downfall. Mm. Because now that's all he does. He just... Ride waves. Rides waves. Kanye makes them. Correct. So it's like... It's like what Drake. I heard, what I've been hearing. Drake's sticking to one thing, and that's all he's doing, and then Kanye's pushing boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. where, like... I don't know, man. If your podcast was just a normal podcast every single time, I wouldn't listen. Right? Yeah. Like, I feel like you have to push boundaries. Just doing what other people do, I don't find the... In my lane of creativity, I'm not in it for the money, obviously, right? And just and nothing against it. Like, I'll, I'll kudos to whoever wants to listen. Drake is in this. I don't think he's in it for the music. Mm -hmm. He's in it for the money. Yeah. Which is like, once and again, dude, dude, nothing against Same. it, bro. Like, bro, you went from Degrassi to whatever else you were doing, like, <laughs> to being a, a, a weird major transition. <laughs> like, but you know what I'm saying? So like, what was your favorite TV show? <laughs> 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 you know, but like, you're doing it. And, Bro, he's doing it in a way that most yeah. people haven't. He's made it into a science. And he's yeah. talked about it, like, pass it on the future. Like, he's doing it, which kudos to you. But I don't see music as a, like, unemotional, like, um, thing. I see it as you're pushing boundaries. You're supposed to be influencing. I think that's the way you should be. That's why I like Tyler, the creator, too. Tyler, the creator's doing that. He's yeah. definitely doing his own thing. Yeah. You go into this ambiance. You're, you're transported. When I, I went yeah. to Igor Tour. It was one of the first, last concerts I went to yeah, um, before oh, COVID. Bro. Experience. Jaden Smith. I saw Jaden Smith there. Same thing. Wait, was it? I'm jealous. Jaden Smith. Smith is underrated. Bro, Jaden Smith is amazing. His uh, last album right. he dropped, he dropped on Friday. Yeah. Uh, was um, a re a re no. What was yes. the tapes? Or? No, it, it was, was a cozy tapes. Uh, I'm thinking of no, ASAP. But it is the uh, cool tapes. Um, yeah. But yeah. it's a remix that he did for like Day Trippers for like his trippy vibe. Yeah. Bro, it's a remix of his other one and I loved it. I love the remix yeah. version of it. He's pushing culture too in his own way, in his own collective. And he's so smart And I too. love that, bro. So creative. Like that's where I'm like, I don't, it's hard to say because people are like, well, oh, you can't say that. But I'm like, Drake's not that creative or he's not pushing creativity. So, so here's where, he's here's where and that's all I, I, I can't attach to him. Here's the criticism for Kanye. Like everyone's saying Drake's a better rapper. If you've heard 30 Hours on Life of Pablo, you would know that like Kanye is a freaking, he can rap. Even listen he to can facts. Rap. Like, facts. He can rap, but he facts. chooses yeah. not. Even, <laughs> even the leaked, and I don't get even the leaked, Even the leaked one that he did. He can rap. That Drake leaked, which once again, weird Way to so leak your oh, leak your opponent's your demise. <laughs> like it's it's like leaking your opponent's best song. Dis Drake like, leaked our like, yeah. this year, bro. But it, like <laughs> when he goes, go, he talks about like, Abu Dhabi, and then he's like, told Drake not to like. Yeah. And he and he references his uh, other song where he says, "When I hit you with a W Y D, you better hit me with a yes, sir. Yeah, bro, <laughs> what do you want, sir? Crazy. What do you want me to write? I'm like, bro, what? I think people forget Kanye. Like young Kanye hung out with Twista and Andre 3000, so. Of course, this man can rap. He just, I feel like he holds, well, I wouldn't say holds back. He just puts his attention in, in other places. It's not his forte. 
Yeah, it's not his forte, but he can do it. Like, if mm-hmm. Kanye really wanted to just straight up spit, he could, you yeah. know? That's what he's like, done on Watch the Throne. That's what he did on Dark mm, Twisted Fantasy. That's what I'm he saying. put out, when, when he's put into a place that he has to, he does it. That's why I'm actually honestly hoping one day we get Drake and Kanye on an album. Because I know that if Drake puts out a freaking rec, uh, <laughs> verse, so. they're going to push each other. <laughs> they need they, each they other. Will, they, I, bro, I don't... It's like Joker and Batman, bro. 100%, it's bro. like what J. Cole Like, says. if they were on a freaking track together... The fact that they like, uh, what's the song they are on together? With, there's a few, but glow. Uh, no, was, I don't like. <laughs> yeah, let's right. yeah, <laughs> no. No, no. That, that shouldn't even deserve a mention. No. Yeah. yeah, more life is one of his lower albums. Yeah. I like I don't that. Like more life, I love that. Album. I don't like but, more. Um, but that song was trash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one with him, Eminem, Lil Wayne. Oh, forever, oh, forever. forever yeah. First name, great. Like, iconic. Kanye like, said. Kanye mentioned when he heard. Kanye mentioned when he heard Eminem's verse. He had to redo it like a thousand times. And even then, Kanye's verse isn't great, but he had to redo it. He pushed himself a little bit more and he had to deliver in time, right? But he still worked on it. I think when you got great artists like that in the room, they push each other. Eminem has mentioned like, he's like, oh, I don't care if I lose a Grammy to Kanye, but don't give me like losing a Grammy to someone else, right? That's <laughs> why he said anything. And if Eminem, the greatest rapper, lyrically, like just verbiage of all time, there's no one else. Like, there's no debate. I don't say he's going to make the best music, but rapping, just straight up. I mean, up there's Lil Pomp and Smoke Purp. Oh, no, please don't. <laughs> so we're ending this. Like, and he's mentioning Kanye, like, he's okay with losing to Kanye or Grammy. Yeah. It shows respect Where are level, they now? right? So, and, and Lift that, drivers. In, in that field, it's like, bro, there are certain fields, and I think Drake should focus on, he's a great rapper. I don't think he's a bad rapper. If he gets ghost writing or not, his delivery of it is amazing. Yeah. So I don't really care, personally, about the ghost writing or not. Like, people do it. They've always done it. It's how your delivery is, you know? Everyone does it. I agree. I just had to throw this in there. Somebody said that uh, this album sounds like Drake actually wrote it. And so I was like, wow, that's actually pretty sad. You know? <laughs> 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 but but nah, that, no disrespect. What's it, it, it was a joking album. So <laughs> if you see this, Drake. If you see this, Drake. <laughs> you don't like the comparison. Like, like We're actually most, huge fans. <laughs> I, can, I compare the two albums saying John is better. A, a lot of us didn't do yeah. right? But I think Donda was a serious album. CLB was not a serious album. No, I, it's a joking the album. Cover art. The cover art, the different. music videos, yeah. it's, it's a joking album. So I don't understand how people could say it's better because it's, it's a joke. Yeah. Not like in terms of it's terrible, but it is a joke. Just and it's for not, fun. It's just for fun. Yeah. Like it's, it's something that like Young Thug would drop. Yeah. Because Young Thug just drops albums like 30 freaking thousand albums for no reason. <laughs> right? And so it's like, bro, it's like if he Uzi. dropped this one and no one, like it's like, Scorpion had more of a ambiance to it. Mm. I don't think Scorpion was a debatable. I, I, I'd have to give it more time. I don't think Scorpion's inherently better than CLB. Scorpion is, in my opinion, one of his worst albums. It did sell the best. Still has some bops, though. It still has some bops. And yeah. I think more so Even than his CLB. Rap stuff. So, Even more than CLB. And I think it's his one of his worst albums. So that's, like, that's saying something, I yeah. think. I was upset because I thought, and uh, I was listening. I don't know if y'all... Let me grab some drinks, by the way. Go ahead, go ahead. Doing. Do your thing. So I saw... What's his name? Uh, this is a guy on YouTube called Sean C. I don't know if you know who that is. Sean C is kind of like an Anthony Fantano type. I love Anthony Fantano. He's the coach. I but, sent uh, him the music review last Bro. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, Sean C is more laid back. You know, he's a yeah. cooler dude. Like, he's like our age. You know what I mean? He's cool. And uh, he was listening to, uh, to the Drake thing. And um, he basically was saying that, like, the sad thing about uh, this album is that in the beginning of the album, I don't remember which song it was. I don't know if it was like the end of Champagne Poetry or the Poppy's Home, one of them. He goes like, he says something along the lines that you're gonna like, I'm going into a different version of me. Mm. And like, this was supposed to be like, you've had your kid. You know what I mean? It's not fresh anymore. Yeah. Like, I wanted some more introspective, like. That's what everyone what wanted. Like. That's and what instead, thought, he's like, yeah. no, I just got. 12 girls pregnant and put them on my album cover. 12 emojis. So, <laughs> like, that's bro. one of the things, too, that, like, I can't... Once again, I guess it's, like, feeding into your character, right? You can't complain about Kanye talking about Jesus and Christ and right. God. You know that's his prerogative. You know that Drake's prerogative is that type of stuff. I just can't mess... It's a lack of another word. I can't frick with mm. someone who's just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to... I'm 38 or whatever his age is. And I'm going to sleep around. Or even Same. like the the people are like, oh my god, it's so hard that he used Kanye's. T- Kanye was talking about, oh yeah, here you have Drake, the most eligible actor in the world. He's just sleeping with all of Kim's friends. People are like, that's a social flex. I'm like, that's 
To who? Kind of exactly. to, that's very it's sad. Very your sad. mission. <laughs> it's, I'm it's, a married man. It's like, getting old. Like, I get, I'm a married man, but like, Literally. bro, especially when you're almost forty. Didn't he have a song where it's like, I like, isn't his song? Maybe it's got plans, but it's like, I can't have two kids and keep playing around. Well, you have kids you and you're playing around, now. bro. You you're, you're you're proving yourself wrong. You are playing around, sleeping around at thirty some years old, about to catch an STD or something. And I don't respect it. Like once again, future these people play these songs. I just don't respect it. Right? And it's like, and it's like. It's weird. whatever. Do it's your weird. thing. Like, I don't have an issue with it, but it's like... It's a weird flex. That's not what we want to hear. Yeah. Like, you can be that way, but, like, understand your audience, bro. Like, I'm not coming on here talking about nails, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm not coming on here talking about beauty. I'm talking, I'm talking about hustle. If you did, I'd still be down. Let's go, bro. I mean, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> my wife you know, painted actually, my nails today, so I'm just saying. Like, uh, you know, we ready. We ready. The camera can, you know, uh, my wife's just getting ready. We ready. We ready. Hey. prepared. <laughs> <laughs> James Charles sponsored this video. <laughs> no, please, no. Another artist. I think he's I think he's canceled for the 20th time, so maybe someone else. Oh, did he get canceled again? I think so. Dang, People are getting canceled me. very quickly, so like... Mm. I'm not sure who That's in the sad. nail culture you can use, but someone else. He probably didn't say brothers and parents. He was one of the Kardashians. I think they're less canceled than James Charles, but... Continue, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, I don't know, man. I just feel like there has to, like you said, like, live whatever you want to live, bro. But there's got to be a point where your art starts reflecting who you were, who you are now. Yeah. And somebody, I've heard a criticism of, of Kanye being like, I don't know, Drake kind of has his thing figured out. He knows his lane and he crushes it. Kanye yeah. feels like he's lost. Mm. And like he's constant. I'm like... Kind of feels the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> it kind yeah. of feels like Kanye knows what he's doing. He's just experimenting. But Drake is lost and he yeah. just is doing what gets streams. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? What's popular. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And it, I don't know, man. I just, I don't respect. It's like Eminem since one, like one time Eminem was, I'll, I'll use him because he's a good reference point yeah. and he's older, right? And he's gone through the, the ranks and they asked him, why aren't you making certain albums right now? Or why aren't you talking certain things? He goes, because I'm rich. What, what else? Uh, my, albums, <laughs> like my albums were angry so there. Hard, yeah. like, 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 exactly. So, if your albums, you're angry, right? You're not going to talk about the hood when you don't live in the hood anymore, right? That's mm. a, I feel like that's a real thing, right? Because you can talk about the social problems anymore. in the hood yeah. and the social issues but and movements. But don't try exactly. to be, pretend yeah. that something you're not. Drake, you have a son now. Possibly more from, from the way you're talking. From oh the my. looks of the cover. Yeah, and what you're doing, right? So, if that's your reality. Certified. Like, yes. I. <laughs> I can't act that way because I'm married, right? But if I wasn't married and I had a son, I can't act that way anymore, right? Yeah. So, like, there seems to be no sense of responsibility. It seems to be like, this, I'm just going to party the rest of my life. Bro, you're hitting 40 soon. Yeah. When are you, st like, I'm thinking 25 is the age where I'm supposed to act responsible. I'm focused on taxes. I'm focused on this. I'm focused on being a better husband, eventually being a good father, yeah. right? I don't think a good father, so, like, I'm not sure how, Don how old Adonis is, two, whatever, but when he's like old enough to understand things and he listens to his dad's album, he's like, bro, dad, you were, that was like three years ago. You were talking about, I'm too sexy for my pant. Like that's not a, <laughs> I would feel embarrassed for my kid to listen to it. The same for Kanye. I'm not saying Kanye has none of it. Like that part where he talks about like, I wouldn't think that he would make those. That's why I liked his pivot change mm -hmm, in the yeah. recent years. Cause I'm like, you can't be making these songs he's when like, you're married with kids. At 7 a.m. on Bridal Path, you were feeding me. What are you talking <laughs> about? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, exactly. About <laughs> like, you know, it just, once again, and people are like, oh, I've spoken to people like, that's as provocative, that's who Drake is. And I'm like, I don't respect the idea of being an internal bachelor. I don't. And yeah. once again, to each their own. Right. But I don't think that's life's goal. And I don't think that it should be something that you're, Flexing, it's a yeah. very weird flex. Yeah. I, I agree, and I feel like what it's key for a lot of artists. I was listening to um a podcast, it was Kurt Franklin's podcast with Chance the Rapper, mm -hmm. very good, good. good very podcast. good. Yeah. But um, he had Chance on there, and Chance was talking about like all the hate he got for his most recent album, which we can all agree is pretty trash. Oh, so but, um, trash. Thing is, <laughs> Some people say. his worst, his worst yeah. project ever. His mixtapes yeah. were a thousand times better. I'm like, God. Dang, yeah. for a first album? <laughs> Some could What'd say you do? I think he's pretty bad. I was going all the way. <laughs> but, uh, but no, like, <laughs> so Chance was just saying, you know, like how he got a lot of hate for saying how much he loved his wife and people, you know, mocked him and made memes of it. But he was basically saying like how he started with acid rap. He was telling a story about what he was going through, his struggle with drugs at that time. Then he did a coloring book. That's when he was slowly starting to find like God and everything. Then he did, you know, the song, I mean, the album that was based on, like, his relationship with his wife, and he had just got married. And so it was, like, representing, like, what he was going through in each stage of his life, you know? So it's, like, even though it was, it was horrible, but I respect how he was able to, like, switch it up a little bit. But some artists, 
like Drake per se, they just stay in that one lane and just it gets repetitive after a while. Yeah. You know, and even like people like NF, you know, like I love NF, he's great and all, but you have to be like in a dark you, he's always oh, yeah. like yeah. he he ha- he even said it. I think he said it, um, don't quote me, but I think NF even said like, you know, he has to be in like a dark spot or place because that's like the audience he attracts. He attracts like teenage, depressed, you know, adolescent youth. And so he has to always be in a place where he's like down and depressed like when he's writing his music and he's in like a happy you know relationship he's married i think he just had a kid you know yeah. but he <laughs> music that way, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, no, but and he talks about that almost on every song how yeah. like he has to fight with do i continue doing this thing for my career's sake or do i like switch it up exactly and he hasn't yet so, so clearly i mean i think he's he's talked about it more and he's opened up to the idea but it that's why I'm like, you have to understand your pivot. I mean, Andre 3000 talks about it. He's like, the reason why he stopped doing rap, he was like, it's not because I was, people were like talking to me, like, oh, he lost or anything. He goes, no, I was old. I was getting older. And mind you, he was probably younger than Drake is now when he stopped, really. And Crazy. he was like, I just can't keep up. He goes, it's weird and whack. And you know how when your parents try to be hip? <laughs> Exactly. Like, yeah. I'm thinking, like, my mom, when she was Drake's age, I'm like, you know, was a, a dork, you know, to me. So I'm like, Drake, you're a full on dad. I had to Google search his age, but I'm pretty sure he's 38. I'm like, bro, if you're pushing 40, he's right there. Yeah. You can't be age. acting a certain way. Like, even Kanye, even Kanye, I'm like, bro, you can't. There's certain ways he acts. So I'm like, I'm thankful that he went this route because if he was still on the route of like Lava Pablo and stuff, going into your 40s, 50s, it's hard for me. Jay Z is hard for me sometimes because mm-hmm. I'm like, no, you're not pushing cocaine. No, you're not doing any of these. You know, like, you you're can't right, be saying these things, you know? But that's the thing. That's the thing that I respect about Jay-Z is, like, he doesn't pretend like it anymore. He mm-hmm. kind of teaches you. Exactly. <laughs> like, and that's that's the shift for most people. It's like, okay, let's do a certified love. How fire would it have been if Drake was giving you pointers the whole time, but he wasn't pretending like he was still doing it? I mean, he probably is still doing it. It's Drake. I mean, it's yeah. not like, let's not pretend like homie's not out here, <laughs> you know, doing what he said yeah. he's doing. But... It's Drake. You know what I mean? Like, that's just way more powerful. Hopefully it comes with time, you know? Hopefully, like, it gets to a point where Drake's like, hey, you know. This is probably the album he learns. Yeah, I hope so, you yeah. know? And just his... He's young, though. Like, it, even though we're talking about how old he is, he's yeah. young. So he has... Compared to, like, Jay. Like, yeah. he has 10 years. He's 10 years younger than Kanye, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, bro, he has 10 years on him. Hmm. And they're both 10 for 10 albums. So, so all albums. So that's you crazy. got time. You got time. That's ridiculous, but Drake really put that work in, bro. Yeah, I don't discredit Drake's work ethic. Drake works like almost nobody, nobody near him. I don't like when people are like, "Oh, you just hate Drake." I don't hate Drake. Once again, one of my favorite albums of all time is "Nothing Was the Same." Mm -hmm. One of my first mixed, my favorite mixtapes, not of the top one, but one of my favorite mixtapes of all time is um, "If You're Reading This Is Too Late." Mm. Just there was a two of six, mama. Two of his best, in my opinion, Drake's best projects ever. Nothing was the same. If you're concluding albums and if you're concluding like projects in total, if you're reading this too late, are two of his best works, in my opinion. Yeah. Some of like two of his best works. Way far better than CLB. Yeah. When Legend plays, like, bro, I can, that is an anthem. Mood. What, what song, like, I play that, in, if I play that in the car right now, if I was driving home, I'm put just the out there on. and I'm like, you know, like, put it on, like, I'm, there's speakers, in you know, I wish. and I, if like, if I die, I'm a, I know, I'm like, Legend. legend. Like, I'm saying, like, right now, if I died, I'm a legend, right? Yeah. I'm like, bro, you can't bring that raw emotion, right? In CLB, I didn't feel anything like that. Like, once again, I'm not saying, like, I'm going I'm to refer to it again. Oh, yeah, girl, I'm a lesbian, too. <laughs> what the freak? Or I'm sexy, too. Like, there's not. He started off when I heard uh, Champagne Pro, which I was like, he's going to go into that mood. Yeah. And then he lost. And then me. he stopped. He lost to it. Would, like, imagine an al- a Drake album, all Champagne Poetry. It's all right. 30 for 30 freestyle. I went straight to club music. All two sticks, mm-hmm. one stone. Is that what it's called? Two it's, stones, it's, one stick. Oh, two sticks, one stone. stone. Yeah, two sticks, one stone. <laughs> two birds, one oh, stone. Two, two birds, one stone. Yeah, the kid. Like, this album, them. like once again, this album was markability. Yeah. Yeah. It was not for the, the appreciators of music. It was for markability. It's music, that can, it's music that is mainstream and all things. And once again, there is a, there is a certain like workmanship or whatever to it. It's like you can, anyone can make a pizza. And everyone will eat it, right? But it takes a real chef to make a masterpiece type of work, a ratatouille, something like mm-hmm. special, right? But I don't pay top dollar to go to five star restaurant to get a freaking pizza. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't listen to Drake's full album, right? DJ Academics fell asleep during it. 
And he was like, my top artists and he was are still Drake, Drake, Drake. And he, yeah. and he, because, bro, he slept through it because why? It wasn't the <laughs> album that we expected, bro. How are you trying to say Drake and like tattoo Drake on your arm almost and say my top out, my top five artists are Drake, 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 and Drake, and then fall asleep during it? It's because the album showed its true colors. The same way Scorpion true showed its true colors. Yeah, it's marketable. Yes, you can make money from it, but it doesn't mean anything. If it did, then Kanye would be the best artist because he has way more Grammys than, than Drake, way more sales than Drake, way more money than Drake, right? If we're not accrediting that, then it has to be creativity. It has to be the, the music itself, and that was not CLB. It was, you know, on the topic of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of that, it wasn't. So I think it's a great pivot into... I didn't write this down. But I think we're kind of balancing. We're, we're talking about the balance between masterpiece perfection mm -hmm. and quantity, you know, growth. Because... The truth is, like, I can make the best podcast episode next week, but if I don't post the week after, or if I don't post snippets, or if I don't do all this other stuff that I need to do, it, no one is going to listen to that Masterpiece podcast episode. So it's like, at what point do you decide to sacrifice the Masterpiece to create more? And this is not just in music, in, in mm. all of your lanes, you in music, mm. us in, like, our, you know, niches. Like, what point do you decide, oh, I can't, like, it's not going to be that? Or do you think that that's all you should be trying to do? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, that's someone else speak. I speak a lot, guys. So, like, I know I'm speaking a lot. I got some drinks in me. I'll speak even more, <laughs> you know. And nah, it's not my podcast, chilling. so I don't have to ask questions. I just have to answer them, so I'll, I'll go all in. <laughs> I want to hear what you want to think. Cause yeah, because you're an artist. One of the things like, I've admired about you is, like, you went from doing quantity to, like, really honing in on quality, and it's been paying off. So, what do you think about that? Man, I literally wish I knew what I knew, like, knew years ago. I, what, what I know now, I wish I knew, like, back then when I first started. Because when I first started music, I was, like, dropping albums. I had, like, two albums. And I was just dropping and dropping. Now I've learned, like, okay, I can't just drop anything. I want it to be good. I want it there to be, like, quality. You know, like you said, over quantity. Because I had, like, a lot of songs out. But yeah. they... You know, it wasn't doing anything because I didn't market well. I didn't, you know, have content, things like that. And also what I've learned for me, like as an artist or just a lot of artists in general, um, I feel like the wise thing to do is just to basically just drop singles. But I say like drop stuff like every now and then, like every other month, maybe like that and have content on deck ready. Um, instead of just dropping like full projects, I had to learn you can't do that because like, Attention span for, like, today's youth, they're not going to sit there and listen to a full, like, 15-song album, you know? Like, we, it was hard for us to even get through Kanye's whole thing. Like, I had to take, you know, breaks in between. And so, and imagine... And both long albums. Well, I purposely just breaked on the whole album. But and imagine, <laughs> imagine somebody like Thanks my... Thanks for being honest. Yeah. <laughs> Again, Drake, if you're listening, it's all a gimmick. Uh, <laughs> I will say, Drake, if you are listening, Drake, like... I still think what I think, <laughs> but at least repost the boy. Like, it's not my podcast. He's speaking for himself. Yeah. 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 Like, said, we all love yeah. the album, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Said, I'm going to stick by it. I'm going to stick by it. Are both trash. I'm going to stick by it. I'm going to stick by it. Lecrae and Drake, both trash. Both trash. <laughs> there's a chance Lecrae may hear this more yeah. than Drake. Yeah, so. yeah there's a higher Lecrae. chance of Lecrae than Drake. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, but no, like, it's... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Okay, I like your music. Let me just, <laughs> I like just get everything out now. I was joking. Yeah. Joe, actually, first albums was a crazy. Yeah. yeah, but uh, anyways, no, like I, I think it's just wise now because the generation now their attention span is not there. And so imagine like a small artist like myself trying to drop like a twenty song album, which a lot yeah. of artists have done. Nobody, you know, even like your close family and friends. <laughs> I told Jacob, I was like, bro, if I dropped a almost 30 song album, I promise you, <laughs> you're not going to sit there and listen to every single one. I don't care like how highly you view me. <laughs> like you're going to like be like, okay, maybe after the six yeah. one, <laughs> what, what, what are we doing I'll come here? back to it in two to three business weeks, you know, but you're not going to. See which ones are, are trending. Yeah. yeah. So the, which, one so top the stars. which one are your top performers? Which one are your top performers? Oh, Apple one out music. of 50? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. But no, so, <laughs> yeah, that's my mindset colors. now, you know, just knowing how to market better, knowing your, your audience and going from there you know like really honing in and knowing your audience and knowing how to you know just 
move in that way and like as an artist it's just always kind of difficult because you see everybody else doing their own thing and you see this person with a music video and this person dropping an album but you really have to just know who you are as an artist and you know just be confident and have faith in yourself and you know trust the whole process i think honestly too it depends uh, yeah Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> I think, honestly, too, it depends on expectations, too. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a huge thing, especially as creatives. I feel like we all have that pressure on ourself of, like, hey, I just, in a sense for me, I just dropped this post. Yeah. All right, now how am I going to top this? How am I going to attract more people, something mm-hmm. different, and be like, hey, I can do this, too, but don't get caught up in that post, you know? Right. Yeah, it's just that expectation, I feel like, for me personally. Yeah, and honestly too, even though we're not supposed to, uh, comparison, mm. yeah, it's a Twins. huge thing, it's and I even struggle with it too. When I see other photographers, oh, they're doing this. Should I do that? Should I just stay to myself? I don't know what I'm gonna do and all that. I will say, like, especially with that, I mean, I don't post a lot, as people see, because I take forever to try to think of posting or not. Like I have 20 versions of my <laughs> Instagram feed. I'm not kidding. I'm like, That's insane. I'm like 50 photos into my Instagram feed right now. I have thousands of pictures of things and I don't post it. Cause you know, how am I supposed to, what I want to do it depends. Right. And I don't really have the audience. To, I don't care. Yeah. If you're a part of my following, I'm sorry that I am terrible to you. <laughs> um, but with that in mind, it's like, I think you can have quality and quantity, mm. but I don't, believe that you should ever sw- sacrifice quality mm-hmm. um not getting wrapped in perfection is is fine and, it, and it's ideal because as creators i know we get attached to our pieces I, I think that was one of the biggest difficulty for me handing in work for other people was i'd rather not hand in anything than hand in something that's crappy right that have yes. my name on it so that's a difficulty that we de- debate with if you're creative and you're listening i'm sure you feel the same way it's difficult but i think there is a good balance where you can still strive to be better so I don't think that it's like if I produce something today, right? That's my best piece of work so far. And then my next 10 posts aren't, or my next pieces of work aren't the best. That's fine. But I'm still striving to be better. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where I might gravitate towards, well, I'm not doing the same thing. Like five years ago, maybe, you know, a certain type of work was the best thing. Maybe for your photography lane, one type of artwork or one type of photography style, right? Um, was the keen place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was a photographer at one point too, being the art, you know, person that's done a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, we've mentioned. Um, and, Swiss knife. and then you switch, you switch it up though. Like, you know, at one point you're very focused on like, you know, canvassing and doing this, but now you're, you're, you're in another campaign. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the ideal is find your masterpiece. And sometimes that's your masterpiece. Like Da Vinci only has one Mona Lisa, yeah. right? But he has tons of works that, gravitate to certain people, right? I don't think Mona Lisa is the best work. Van Gogh, for example. A lot of people think a lot of his work is the best, but I think Sunflowers is my favorite piece of his. Or the smoking, man, like Picasso has yeah. a smoking man. Like Each person, art, artist, and I'm saying like artist because it's easier to, to gravitate towards. Not yeah. everyone knows, photographer, right. Peter McKinnon, and all these people, but like right, right. artists, right? Who's your favorite Da Vinci? What's your favorite Van Gogh? What's your favorite, or Van Gogh, if you want to pronounce it right. Or what's your favorite freaking Picasso? What's your favorite like, you know, Salvador Dali? Like what are the, your... Um, for art pieces, right? Mm. And to each person, it speaks way differently, right? Yeah. Your favorite photography piece might not be mine. Yeah. Your favorite song, proven point, Chance has a song about this is my favorite song, but that's not my favorite song. It was freaking acid rap. It's not. It's Coco Kisses. Like, Coco Butter Kisses is the best song in my opinion. Mm. Tell the people it might not be, right? <laughs> <laughs> so like, Hot know, Shower, I bro. <laughs> that album is a tough, tough one. But like, you know, so like, <laughs> Uh, you know, so Chance, like, I think you, it's it's, it's the one thing with creativity. <laughs> we just say everybody, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Reference every single person. Tag it's them all, all in this gimmick. post. You know, it's all a tag gimmick, them all. Bro. Tag them all. This is all for the clicks and yeah, all for yeah. the click. But like, it's the same thing with like what we're doing here. It's like creativity in, in so many other jobs. There's so many like this is a, like math, right? This is the right answer. But with creativity, it's all subject to the beholder, mm. right? Your photography is subject to what people think about it. Mm-hmm. You've done weddings? Yeah. How are those, bro? You might think the photo is great. The wife is like, oh my God, my cheeks are so fat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I'm sorry, you should have ate less gluten. I don't know. No. Like, oh. like, 
Uh, bro, like, what can I do there? Right to the husband. Yo, <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> Jessica is triggered right now. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, trigger a warning to the man. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and the same thing with like your song, you might think yours is the best, but I'm like, bro, your best song is this one, you know? And yeah, yeah. yours, I love your yeah. work. Kudos to you. That was the reason why, I like, you know, we've connected a lot. But like, what I might think is dope, you might think is right. trash, you know? Right, like, right, right. and what I might think is trash, you might think I is think your best dope. work, right? Like, yeah. it's, it's all subjective. All and I think that's the difficulty in creativity is we have to strive for the best for us if that's what we're going for. And we have to know why we're in it. And Are that's, you in it for money or not? And that's the thing. And that's kind of, again, looping it all back, Drake, Kanye. It's like, how do you compare? Mm. It's like, mm. what's your measurement of the success? Yeah. Right? We've t- I talk about that all the time on this podcast. It's like, do you measure success? Is it a musical masterpiece that like you could tie in a whole f- three whole performances in stadiums. Can you do that with CLB? No, bro. Uh, <laughs> the can best you, you sell can do- vests for $200? No, bro. Can you part <laughs> with air? They sold Kanye's air from the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bro, yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah, $3,000 or so on body. Come That's on now. That's crazy, bro. Did, did Drake uh, sell <laughs> air? No. <laughs> uh, no, bro, but seriously, like, that's that's what you got to think about as a creative, and I, I feel like that's something that's been helping me a lot too. It's like, what's my success right now? And understanding that your success is going to change, your measurement mm. is going to change as you grow and as you continue to do your thing. Because like right now, my success is very small. Mm. I haven't uploaded a podcast in a long time. My success today is to do this one. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? We've been moving, we've been doing all this stuff. Oh, this yes. is my success right now. My success in a week when I'm back in a rhythm is going to be okay. Well, let's just put out. My success when I put out a hundred episodes is no longer gonna be how many episodes can I put out. It's probably gonna be how impact. many views am I getting? Impact, yeah. yeah. How many people are DMing me? Like the changes as you go. So it's like that's the biggest thing as a creative that you gotta like really think about and be okay with change. Cause you're gonna change like creatives in general, specifically have to change. Have to change. Drake. Dude. You gotta Drake. change, dog. Drake. <laughs> yeah, like Drake. 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 <laughs> Soldier Boy, you gotta change. <laughs> like Ooh. that's we have like creatives have to agree that we have to change, right? So like, if you're for watching all creatives this. watching, please yeah. change your stuff. Yeah, bro. I'm bro, I love my Instagram. A lot of people like my Instagram. I'm tired of it. Mm. I I have a that's why I have like a thousand posts ready to go, like not a thousand. Oh, I probably okay. have I probably have sixty posts. That interconnect in different ways. I was about to say. Um, and you see my Instagram, right? Over yeah, here, yeah, yeah. But in a different way that people don't even, I haven't seen anywhere else. Yeah. Right? And people say, like, like mine, I'm like, I'm like, thank you. But I'm also like, are you basic where you don't notice? Because like, I hate it. I honestly hate it sometimes. Wow. And, I, and I take the I was comments. actually going to say I like it, but, you <laughs> know. I'm chill. I'm chill okay. <laughs> yeah, we're no, like, yeah, no, we like, may be basic. basic. We're not basic. Not like, we hate it kind of like we we're hate not crazy. Like, we yeah. kind of hate them, but like, no. <laughs> As in basic, as in like the posts are basic, right? Like people are like, oh man, that's so complex. I'm like, it's so simple, bro. If I showed you what I do, I do it on an app. Shout yeah. out to GoDaddy Studio because they bought out the company I used to I used to have Video. it over. But I use them all the time. I don't even use Photoshop anymore. I do it on my phone. My wow. posts are done on my phone. Like, That's crazy. Flexibility, right? But it's also the thing where it's like, man, I learned that I don't need Photoshop. I don't need all this other crap. But I need to change. I can't yeah. stand this anymore. I can't mm. eat a freaking... Can you eat Chipotle every day? Same burrito Probably every day. Low key. The same burrito every, every day. day. No. no variation. But that's Chipotle. That's the beauty of Chipotle. You can change it up, bro. No, but if you but can you only can. get one thing every single day, you would change it up. You need some flavor changes, yeah, you know? You're like right, you're right, you're I love right. Brazilian food. You'll be getting gas. I'm eating Japanese right. food the last week, you know? <laughs> you're you're like right, right. See now Taco Bell though. Taco Bell. I could eat that every no, day. No, Taco Bell Taco Bell is a four I don't know about that. Taco Bell is a four year mistake. It's a probiotic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bowel movement adjuster. Like it is it is ready to go. You you don't need any of those lax like lax. Taco it's Bell Taco is Bell. the real watch the throne, honestly. Bro. You will be in the bathroom. I did a work trip, right? And I took Taco Bell. Right before the work trip, right? I had sorry. a flight at 4 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I know where this is going. My stupid self was I'm like, sorry. it was, we went to Miami for this work trip, right? Which was dope and was fun and interesting, um, you know, for a job to pay for you. And I was like, cool. You could say it was the shit, huh? It was, it was the shit. Because I was like, hey, babe, this is me driving. She, you know, picking my wife. Shout out to my wife. Love you. And I was like, let's get some Taco Bell. I was reading the mood. I was also... Um, <clears throat> under the influence of some certain things okay. that made me hmm. very... Burger emotionally right. attached to Taco Bell. Drake. And I was like, I should get some Taco Bell. I was, re- I was, I was in, influenced by Donald and Drake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, man, Taco Bell's a great idea right now, right before a work trip. And um, my work colleague who lives in Dallas is going to meet me there. 
Bro, I hit that airport and I passed the security. I was like, where's the nearest bathroom? I need to <laughs> now. Oh. I can't wait to the plane. I got 15 minutes to board. I'm going to use all those 15 minutes. Hey, when TSA all touched you, it was like <laughs> every second. He's like, are you carrying anything? I'm like, I got a bomb right behind me, but you don't oh. even know. <laughs> like, I don't really know. I dropped. You I, said I, that to him? No, I, was, uh, I almost did. I was like, I was sweating though. I was like, geez. are you sure? And every single time, fun fact about me, every time I go through TSA security, any TSA security knows me, which they might, because every time I go through them, they pat me down. I don't know what it is. I got some some abnormality. It's your beard, bro. I'm guaranteed pat down. They just want an excuse to touch you. Yeah, but maybe that's Honestly. it. I'm just too handsome. You look like, like I'm too sexy. Hey, I'm too, too sexy, sexy for my <laughs> Automatically. No, but legit, every single time I got pat down, the guy's patting me down. I'm like, bro, you don't want to pat too hard. He goes, what? I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom real quick. And I almost said I had to go. thought I this was going somewhere like, else. I was like, I gotta go, bro. I got to go. You got to be careful, bro. I was like, I, I, was like, I ain't talking about before this. He goes, dude, let me just pat you down real quick. Let me do the test. All right, you're good. And I was like, I was like where's the nearest restaurant? He goes, that way. I was like, cool. Nice. Thank you. That's crazy. Dude, well, I want to, I had some questions for you guys. Some premeditated ones. We kind of went into some tangents, which I'm glad we did. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we did. A you know, bit. we all Taco lesbians. Bell. You know what I mean? But um, KFC talk about best best yeah, uh, collapse okay. in Taco Bell. Yeah. KFC, bro. Quick story. I went to. I wanted. I wanted Taco Bell one day, right? Shit. I was like, I'm sorry. They got them dollar burritos. You know, they do be bro, dollar. Bro, they be bussing. That's just a good deal. Like, you know what? I'll make it, it Taco Bell. After it's financially savvy. Like, financially deal. savvy deal. Exactly. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go. And then they happen to be one with the KFC, right? I'm like, bro, dangerous. Bro, I haven't Dangerous. I haven't tried the KFC chicken sandwich yet, bro. Is so, it good? So I'm like, you know what? I'm probably not gonna like it. I don't like the Popeyes one. I don't know if it's the one I got. I didn't like. The you know what's crazy? Either. It's always been I, on I the like menu. The Popeyes, People, much really? Much. It's always yeah. been on the menu. What? I think someone just rediscovered it, but it's always been on the menu. Yeah, Popeyes wow. one isn't like people are like trying to say it's comparable to Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A wins. I'm gonna put y'all on real quick while we're on the subject of KFC. Yep. They have these seasoned fries that they have. Like it's. Like every now and then throughout the year, on. they are so good. Uh, I swear, I don't know if you guys have heard <laughs> like, like nacho checkers. fries, like Taco Bell. Nacho yeah, fries? the nacho oh, fries, they're but better. Like, mm. oh my goodness, KFC slept on. So, she, you know, I'm like, <laughs> you want to talk about it? Unhealthy fast foods. Like, hey, I, 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 we try to be healthy at our household, bro. We, <laughs> too. I just got we made hungry. pineapple. <laughs> like, we took, the, we used the pineapple skins to make a water and all those things. Oh, wow, what? Like, yeah, we try to be super healthy. We try to be eco friendly. We do one trash bag a week. So just want to, I mean, I work for Tesla. I try to be equal friendly crazy, bro. and healthy, especially because like the cancer stuff, yeah, maybe yeah. like we're very proactive with that. Right. But sometimes in some moments you pass by KFC, you pass by Taco Bell and you're you like, to do it. bro, like your heart hits. And I, I told my wife, I'm like, I don't want to do festival with our kids, but I'm like, I don't know if we just do date nights and we do that and we don't ever tell them what we're doing on date nights. <laughs> and like, they think we're like being super romantic and we're just stopping by Taco Bell because those things slap bro. so hard, bro. McDonald's, Taco Bell, KFC. It's bro. like they win. It so does hit different. Win. It does. So tell me why I'm like, I had a bad experience with Popeye's, right? I'm yeah. like, I just, I got to try the KFC sandwich because mm. like it's the new, got to. It's, it's the new player in the game. You, know, you got to watch at least, <laughs> you know, a couple swings, you know? So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna order the naked chicken chalupa because yeah. that just sounds that's good. That's gonna be my lunch. Didn't even yeah. know that was a thing. No, nah, bro, it's amazing, bro. Anyways, I'm gonna order the <laughs> naked chicken chalupa, right? Mm. That's what I'm gonna eat. So I get it, and then I get the chicken set, thinking I'm just gonna take a bite and I'm not gonna eat it. Take your time. The KFC chicken sandwich is the best sandwich out of all of them. Sponsorship by KFC. Uh, <clears throat> Can we have an ad break, ad break, ad break real Better quick. Than ad, break, ad break real quick. So this episode. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by bro, KFC. For real, bro. <laughs> Better than Chick-fil-A? Bro, I mean, so here's the thing. Chick-fil-A feels healthier. So like, I would eat <laughs> it, it more. Well, there's it more feels, options, right? Yeah. There's more options. <laughs> it so feels KFC, healthier. KFC has more options. You, have, you can get a grilled one if you want to feel healthier versus the fried oh. ones, right? Yeah. So the KFC one's fried, right? Yeah, yeah. It's straight. Does like, it have like some bro. type of sauce on it? <laughs> Bro. The finger licking sauce, bro. bro. Oh, oh, really? Dude. Bro, it's got some sauce on it, bro. I just bomb, bro. Elliot, I know where we're going out of this. <laughs> no, I got to try that now. Yeah. You got to. Bro. All y'all going to go What time they close? What time they close? Yo, so can we get that for the next podcast? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Can just we do like a sandwich episode? A big bucket of chicken right here. Sandwich yeah. tasting. Bro, that'd be crazy. But nah, for real. It's really good. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, on the topic no of more drinks. Um, no, but <laughs> I wanted to know one of one of the things we're all in very like you know I feel like interesting fields. You know what I mean? Like there's janitors, not that interesting. You know what I mean? Like shout out to all my janitors. But like I think it's pretty interesting, bro. I do that every time I flush a toilet. <laughs> 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 what do you mean, bro? I can do it too. I'm glad I'm not one anymore. But go ahead. <laughs> 
Kadel just took that personally. Hey, hey, Kadel hey, took that personally, by the way. <laughs> Flashback, ah, YMCA days. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> But you get a test. It's not that interesting. You it's have an interesting life. You have an interesting. You have an interesting. <laughs> For yeah, you guys, it's not that interesting. And shut up. Uh, I think that you have some great. I mean, y'all probably have some tandem stories to tell. But we do. <laughs> I put in my in my thing some crazy <laughs> stories that you could share. I don't really have that many. I mean, I'm gonna let y'all go first so I can think of one. But I know y'all got to. I mean, you just talked about your Taco Bell fly, and that's pretty. Well, that's crazy. not a project one, but yeah, yeah, talking no, about yeah. fly was definitely yeah. one. craziest story. Period. Like oh, that period. happened during a project, or like you know, obviously related to your field. Elliot, yeah, I'll let y'all. I'll let y'all so go I think, first. I think I'm gonna do. I'm Elliot. gonna do two, but one's gonna be super short. So, I feel like as an artist, the three biggest fears are falling on stage, forgetting <laughs> your lyrics. <laughs> Or losing your voice. You did all three. I did all three. <laughs> Damn. <And> so uh, <laughs> <laughs> three for one. I lost my voice recently, actually. Uh, may I have some more Sprite, please? Yeah. Thank you. You're so awesome. I lost my voice Just like Sprite. two weeks ago. He's our Christian artist. He doesn't drink. So yeah. <laughs> not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> he has an but audience to appeal to. Behind the scenes, is He different. has an audience <laughs> to appeal to, okay? Again, He's McCray, very if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> he has very Pentecostal audience. He has to appeal to them, so he does <laughs> not drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I squeezed it mad. I squeezed it. I tried to be quiet. I tried to be quiet, so it was making too much noise. So I was like, it was making too much noise. So I was trying to like just close it up without making noise, you know, behind the scenes. <clears throat> so I lost my voice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think that was the, you know, that was a crazy time. That was two weeks ago on stage, and legit, I was so hoarse, and I didn't know what to do. But you know, we made it work. So, long story short, but um, another story I have. This was two years ago. I have a friend, uh, he goes by Noble, and he's known as the Urban Ninja here in Dallas. Uh, we were actually doing like an Odd Society uh, promo video. Mm-hmm. Odd Society is a group that um, I'm a part of that we we do like events and stuff every now and then. You know, we've been dead since COVID. But um, we were doing a promo video for it, and we had a friend, Noble. He He's like a daredevil. He climbs on buildings. He <laughs> hangs off cranes, things like that, you know. He's that guy. Risking his life, yeah. Yeah, risking his life for on no a daily reason. basis. For no for, reason. For oh, fun. For, for, for fun. For for clout. I mean, it's, it's, it's Well, sometimes. I'm going to be honest. Well, <laughs> for the adrenaline and for sometimes him. the clout. <laughs> for him. Yeah. It's for him. We still don't know why. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so we, we go to the. Uh, should I say where we went? Because. To a location. I, we can went I, to a certain location. Yeah, you, you tell, tell it better than You guys were both in the Yeah, we were both there. Okay, so. I why I was there. So. So we were going to downtown Dallas. Yeah. And it wasn't even planned that day what we were going to do or what happened. So we were driving to downtown Dallas uh, in the city. and <laughs> Just passing my behind you. So it's all good. So we, were just <laughs> so we were driving in the city. And, of course, on that day, there's cops everywhere. There's cops on, like, every block. We have no idea idea why. And uh, we go to this parking garage. I think it's St. Marcus Parking Garage. It's like the big He's being spiral. specific, right? Oh, so, the the so now, <laughs> hey, we, we've shouted out every single, like, artist. Police, if you're watching. These, FBI. Are, the, these are the guys. FBI, it's all a gimmick. <laughs> these are the guys. <laughs> it was years ago anyway, so it don't yeah. matter. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the Neiman Marcus, Neiman Marcus Parking Garage. Mm. And it was this big. I like that more, Neiman Parcus. <laughs> That's a pretty dope. Like, if Neiman Marcus had a parking lot, it should be Neiman Neiman Parcus. Parcus, It makes sense. It's a it's a big spiral. So we go there every time just because it's safe and cheap. It's like two dollars just to park, just like Taco Bell. (laughs) (laughs) Not safe though. It's cheap, not safe. Yeah, 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 yeah. E. coli from there or something. But (laughs) so it's safe and cheap. And uh, Noble, he was like, "Hey, today's the day." I was like, "What are you talking about?" And he said, he said, no matter what happens, even if you take a picture or not, I'm going to hang from like a 20 foot railing, maybe even bigger than that, taller than that. You checked on his like mental state. Like if someone tells me today's a day and they hang from a a thing, I'm like, are you good, bro? (laughs) You need some prayer? (laughs) Like, cause like today's a day. Like, how do you say it? Like today's a day or do you went today's a day? Yeah, I thought the story (laughs) was that, you know, like someone says, 
God. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing you Put can pay me to do screen. that. There's I thought nothing. y'all asked him to do that. No. no. He wanted to do he it. We didn't, we didn't I blinked. want him to do it. I blinked and he was down there. And I was like, what's going we on? Were, we were telling him. We were explaining to him. Hey, do you realize that this is not a video game? Like, <laughs> you don't get you nine get lives. Yeah. yeah, Not a simulation. Like, if you <laughs> if you slip and fall, like, it's literally... It's wraps. Yeah, it's over. I mean, I guess in, in one way you look at it, like, if I slip and fall, at least I see my, you know, my savior, I guess. Like, you know... I get to heaven quicker, yeah, you know? Yeah, I guess. Life on earth sucks, you know? I mean, Life on earth sucks. I, I guess there's yeah. good in all but things. But not the way that you are. <laughs> God makes twisted yeah. paths, right? Oh, you know? no. Well, I mean, that's earth sucks. I mean, be honest. <laughs> be honest. 2020 kind of sucked. So, like, I'm not sure when this was. But he would have avoided. Was this before 2020 or after? 2020? Right, it, it was, was before. before. It was yeah, like, he would have avoided it was a while 20 years before. ago. I'm not gonna lie. He would have avoided 2020. Like, I mean, he might have been up. I mean, like, hey. Not a bad deal right there. Yeah. No, but since he was going to do it no matter what, I was like, I might as well just take the picture. I mean, since we're here. Yeah, since we're here at this moment. <laughs> Man's risking his life. Let me at least get the picture for him, yeah. right? His last picture on Earth. I only did like five seconds, took like five pictures. And I was like, hey, let's get up. I was going to say you're fake for that, but you're lucky really real for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So here's the thing. I have something to say. I was upset, okay? So <laughs> after he wanted to do it, this man here, Jacob, went ahead and went with it. He's like, okay, you know what? Let's go with it. I was the one saying, hey, we shouldn't do this. I'm like <laughs> Only panicking. because you would have to tell his mom. And his mom <laughs> sees the picture, who I'm very close with. It's like my aunt. His mom sees a picture, and she got mad at me. I was like, like basically, she came at me, and you know, she was saying, like, oh, you let my son do this and that. And I was like, I am not the one <laughs> responsible. So I was very upset. And mm. We told his mom it was photoshopped. It, you could, it. you she could pass it off Photoshop. You could I pass think it she, but did believe she it, knows right? her son. You could pass it off. Yeah. Photoshop. <laughs> like, I'm no. just saying, I wouldn't lie. You know, you know, because Christ, my Savior, I wouldn't lie about uh. it. I just, I just throw him on the bus. I'm like, hey, before I blink, I would have said the same what you said. I blinked and he was there. Yeah, I told him to get up. He didn't get up, so we took at least a photo. Like, I could go back in time. Yeah. And at least have a, have a good photo for the funeral. You know, like <laughs> no. But what's crazy about it is the next day when I was in bed, I was just looking at the picture and just watched the video again. I got like an anxiety attack from it because I was like. Dang, like, Could've. what if he actually, like, slipped yeah. and fall and, like, that really? would have been, like, in my hands. I would have cried. Yeah. Just yeah, encouraging it. That. I couldn't imagine that, bro. But anyways, moving on. From yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> short, short, short. Sponsored by yeah. Morals, morals of the story. <laughs> Lecrae's trash. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey. We're not associated with him, Lecrae. I love rehab. <laughs> Damn, that's, like, that's gravity. Oh. Gravity. <laughs> I will say on the on the topic of Lecrae, Andy Mino's new uh, Neverland Part Two. I'm Boy, ready for the it. album cover looks fire. No, fire. Whoever the song, did that, Kevin Hackett. Yo, I, I follow the artist. Kevin amazing Hackett work. is amazing. Kevin work. Hackett, he, he does Adrian that. stuff. Adrian Bro, amazing yeah. work. And then even then, Dang, he did like, one for Lecrae. No, he did no, for, for Andy Mino. Neverland Still, Part Two. <laughs> Never, Neverland Part Two looks super dope. So fire. his two songs are are coming in hot, which we are in already know yeah. which i felt weird that he included but it's a top seller so i guess yeah. that's why marketability that's wise weird. which is smart move yeah. smart move marketability wise but then have you seen oh bro it looks oh, so, so fire so even fire. the track list looks fire yeah. the handwriting and then um the song he dropped was it could be worse yeah, yeah. fire that was fire andy Mino disappointed me on. before and then he disappointed me for whatever, like after Uncomfortable, he kind of disappointed me a bit. And then he got back on it with his recent album during COVID. Oh, yeah. And I was like, okay, I respect you again. Yeah. And then this one, I'm super I'm super adamant to listen to. I'm very happy, especially because I love Neverland. I love yeah. the cover work. Like, I, yeah. I was listening to Andy's podcast. Well, not his podcast. It was Ruslan's podcast with um, Andy on it last night. Mm. And he legit was just talking about like his creative, you know, uh, like his mindset. Kind of what we were talking about just now. Um, but, you know, he's more like a, a Kanye, you know, where he like he takes time to drop. He's like, should I drop this? Should I drop that? He's real hesitant and he's super creative. And then, you you know, look at someone like Lecrae is like the Jay-Z who like builds and, you know, brings people along. And Either so, yeah, yeah, I just love that dynamic. But um, I'm hyped for this project, too. Oh, it's going to be a dope project. Oh, yeah. Um, by the way, I can't top whatever, like almost suicide <laughs> death. Like, <laughs> suicide I, I was trying death to think, photo. Like, I remember you sent the, so I'm going to be honest. I, you sent me, you sent us, like in the group chat, right? The, like, yeah. Yeah. Not that this is all scripted, by the way. We've no, been no, no, no. super off track. No, Kanye and Drake was the last. Kanye and Drake. <laughs> I for forgot why I'm here. Yeah. Well, to be like, by the way, I'm That's three. Right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm three and a half drinks in, so like I'm pretty much off topic anyway. I'm only on but, Sprite. And I'm still <laughs> lost. But, like, and I got some heavy pours, so I was like, oh damn. But um, 
<laughs> At least just gassy, right? Yeah. We used to start a drink and Kanye last, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But I will say, I read the that thing you rent, uh, sent the first time. Uh-huh. Never then it, the, again opened it. And then on the Uber ride here, I was like, damn, I got to check the topics again. I just did, to make sure I, I'm did, a, I did the same thing. Like, just to check, like, to make sure I'm an, on topic. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I've never not winged it on a podcast. I knew that it was. So, it like, I'm going to wing it again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, who cares? I just want to add a little bit of structure. In case it got dull in some moments, but whatever. I actually do better when things aren't like scripted. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I feel like it's more pressure if I have to like you know yeah, follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more improviser. I'm yeah. the yeah. same yeah. way. Yeah, I just feel like with four people, like there's got to be a little bit of structure just in case. But yeah. I mean, y'all are all homies, so we're not, yeah. none of us are boring. Yeah. Like I mean, yeah, I could talk nonstop as y'all seen. Like <laughs> I probably have the most count. T- what word count? <laughs> <Wait>. um, <laughs> yeah, your Microsoft uh, Word is popping right now. <laughs> <laughs> you remember but the yeah. word counter the bottom? Yeah, word count like <laughs> yeah. like Italia, word count by like, Leo. You gotta shut up. Like, <laughs> damn, son. And I accept that. That's why I love so uh, proven point why I love having a podcast myself. Mm. Once I ever get back on that, by the way, my audience still <laughs> I am surprised you guys even listen to me still and like me because I definitely don't they're produce here, like this. They're man here does. for Jacob, bro. <laughs> no, they, they, I don't I definitely don't produce like this man does. Forget out. Produce. Or these dudes. Like I don't post or I just even drop freaking episodes. <laughs> I've like I have five episodes of podcasts I never posted. I just carry tags as black. Like, I've only posted like five or ten episodes in total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just push oh, a yeah. button. I encourage shout you to put them out. Shout out to House of Culture is much better. Them out, my next house of Cal- my next episode would be probably with this man. Yeah. Um so the then my next trash. Two, my next two guests, there we go. You know. Um that would never be dropped until like 2040, 2040. Amen. It's like Donda. Kanye. It's like Donda. Take forever. I'm like, see? I like Spider Kanye. But I don't I, I was trying to think of like a crazy moment during a project. Yeah. I can't think of one other than like the crazy moments where you drop, like you do something, you lose it all. Mm. Um, other than like church ones. I can relate to church ones that have been yeah. crazy. That's right. Um, with Hillsong. That's a whole nother podcast. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got but stories on stories. There are definitely crazy stories. What church again? Which one do you I've want been to part of <laughs> I've been at a lot of, part of a lot of churches. Let's talk about the my biggest job one. right now is working with churches. Ooh, um, I'm a sales rep cool. for, I, I, uh, shout out to Pushpay who do like the tats. Pushpay, yeah. Yeah, I work with them. Um, they didn't hire me. Shout actually, out to them. <laughs> shout out to, <laughs> I, I'm saying this like, <laughs> I will say this. I'm starting with a Monday, so I guess like, I don't work with them yet. Pushpay's like, fire though. That's a cool company. I just got hired by them. That's so fire. shout out to Let's Pushpay go. if you ever Let's see go. this. Hopefully you don't see this because I'm yep, talking about Shout out to them. I hope you do see this. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Normalized in house creative. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I'm going to work with Pushpay, but like, you know, they're an interesting company. Glad you know because I think the Elevation is yeah. one of their clients. Yeah, well, I know for sure that like uh, I know Hillsong was all, the, well. all the go get tested stuff that I did was they were partnered with Pushpay. So yeah, because Pushpay does like non profits and churches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but with them, or with church culture that I've worked with, the craziest thing I was involved with was filming Carl Lentz. <clears throat> I would say rest in peace, but like rest interesting, in interesting, <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interest, uh, not rest in peace necessarily, he's, he's still hey bro, alive, can but I just like say, church career, rest in peace, I guess. That's I tough. stand with Carl, bro. I love Carl. I still have his books at home. Like, I still love Carl. I'm going to stay There's quiet definitely on issues this. There. There's definitely issues there because I have problems with that. Totally different topic. Definitely different, like... <laughs> We could get into it for like two hours on our own just on like church culture. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to go film that for a New York slash Boston event <laughs> because when they were opening Hillsong okay, Boston, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. they were hoping. So I was in, I'm from Massachusetts, right? They yeah. were opening up Hillsong Boston. Uh. And when Carl went to go film the like ads and everything for Hillsong Boston, I was involved with Hillsong New York. And Justin Bieber was there. Ooh, Super random, the that's right? Liars. Really random. And he didn't appear reading the video except in the background, but he was posting the stories. And so we had tons of Bieber fans and all these things. And I'm like freaking out. Like, it's, like I don't freak out about artists, right? Typically. And I've met, like, I've seen artists in close proximity. I was this close to Kanye. Like, I took photos at his what? Pablo wow. Tour. Took a separate crazy thing. I took photos at Pablo Tour. That's Super pretty fun. crazy. That was yeah. Oh, what the best. Best. Yeah. that? I, <laughs> oh, crazy photos. I, just took, I took photos, photos at ever. Pablo Tour. Hey, so you want to switch dope. stories real quick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Can I have that story? I, mean, I was hanging off of a crazy. ledge one time. I'm going to see my friend. I just provided trauma. Yours is an experience. But, like, trauma? Uh, fine, since you did two for one, I'll do two for one. Craziest ones were taking photos for Carl Lentz and videos for Carl Lentz for Church Hillsong and then Bieber being there. Mm. And then second was 
I went to the Pablo pop-up shop in Boston to buy a jacket and buy all that stuff, which I do have a Pablo jacket, which I should have worn today. Would have been a cool <sighs> reference point to show it. Um, but I do have an original Pablo jacket because um, I stood in line for six hours. I met the designer there. Wow. And from the designer, I was like, bro, I'm a photographer. Showed him my work. Showed him my Instagram page. And he was like, dude, we need for an extra photographers for the Wait. tour. And I already had my tickets. And he go, dude, if you were a are able to get a refund, I'll get you a GA ticket so you don't have to stay there. What? So I got a, I got a. We're going to every. Pop. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> We're going I got to a every media pass. So at TD Craig. Garden, at TD Garden in Boston, <laughs> at the TD Garden, what? instead of instead of the regular, like I had a regular mission, I got instead of like the regular mission that I had, I got to go like a media pass That's into like what? the general public and take photos of, of uh, Pablo. I'm so I just recently that? on like three Is that weeks on your ago. Feed? No, it's not on my I have, I have one I'm post. I'm curious. Was this Jerry Lorenzo? The, uh, no, the designer, no. Jerry Lorenzo didn't oh. design. One thing, <laughs> one thing I will say, Jerry Lorenzo. Oh. <laughs> random guy. I met, Lorenzo. I met Jerry Lorenzo. Random guy. I'm, taking, oh, no. I'm taking an L with Jerry like Lorenzo. Bro, one thing I'm, I'm frustrated with Jerry Lorenzo, though, is how has Jerry Lorenzo and Kanye never collaborated on their merch together? I'm super frustrated. Jerry Lorenzo oh. has done Bieber's, Yeah, he did the Kendrick's. Purpose. He did Purpose. He did Kendrick's, which I have both, because I love Jerry Lorenzo. I love off... Um, Fear of God. He's never done Kanye merch. What? Which is absurd that. to Imagine me. I'm sure Kanye is like competitive. And they're like, like this. Yeezy bro. and Fear of God are pretty like yeah. similar. But, Imagine but that off collab. God did a, it did a Kanye merch. Because Kanye's merch is never easy. It's always like right now it's Balenciaga. Balenciaga yeah. And last year was like Gildan. And they've done other things before. Or the years before. And I have... Believe me, I have Jesus King merch. I have, I have a, I have, Jesus have King merch is crazy. I have the VHS tape from oh, Jesus wow. King, which is Dang. next to my uh, records, which I love. It's still just too expensive, bro. It was twenty five bucks. The the VHS. Yeah, and I'm the, the shirt my, was forty. Like 70, I'm gonna get mine off the Amazon, shirt, and then I have the oh. hat too. Um, it wasn't bad. The Jesus King which wasn't way, bad. The, which website the, this were you looking at? <laughs> so, the next question. I'm just playing. I don't know why I keep doing that. I've never had one that like focuses on people. So that's cool. Um, now, nah, bro, I think something that I want to talk about is just because this is clearly for creatives. This, yeah. This episode specifically. What's one thing or what's the biggest thing you struggle with? Like when you're creating. In creative. Okay. I was going to say life. I was when like, you're damn, creating. I was like, I didn't know I was in confessions right now. <laughs> I was like, about to say, tag like, it depends. Are we in Catholic, yeah. Catholic confession? Jacob, I know. I was about to say, it, de right it depends now. on how much time we have. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Damn. Okay, creatively. Okay, I'm a lesbian, cool. so. <laughs> According Shout to Shout out Drake. Drake right now. Like, yeah, damn. No, but seriously, Amen. no. Like, I want it, you know, again, part of inspiration yeah. is relativity. And I, want, I, want, I like when people get to see themselves and other people. Mm. Um, so yeah, man. I, I I'll, I'll start off this time. For me, I mean, what I struggle with the most, to be completely honest, is like. Let me think. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Um, I can go if you want me. Go to. ahead. Go ahead. Actually, right. I think Low it's key. the competition. Trying to not make it into a competition and a comparison, like I mm. said earlier. I think that's a huge thing I struggle with, just because I know so many photographers and creatives mm. that it's hard not to like. Oh, I seen you done this one shoot. I bet I can just add another flair to it and do it mm. better. Mm. But at the same time, I can't because then people are gonna be like, "Hey, so and so did this," and then you know, there's a huge beef going on, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, and then a whole social thing. But it's just for me, it's just the comparison and all that. That's a mm. huge struggle. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I agree with Jacob comparison, but also for me, I guess it's just being authentic, you know, mm. like being authentic, you know, there's like you, you hear and like as an artist, you, you always want to, you know, listen and hear different sounds and you see what this person is doing and you want to experiment and see if you can do it or do it better, you know, like Jacob said. And so just really knowing like who you are and really like finding yourself and your identity um, and not, like, trying to find it in other people, you know, and trying to just be able to, like, know who you are. And, like, when you create, like, hey, this is coming from a place of, like, uh, you know, like, me doing this, not, like, me trying to be this person or me trying to, like, keep up with this person. So, yeah, just being authentic is something that I've struggled with and I'm still trying to learn uh, comparison for sure because I feel like every creative, you know, struggles right. with comparison. So, But I want to, I want to, we can come back and we can both give our oh, answers. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all good. For you, like that, you know, it's easy to say, like, 
find yourself or like be yourself. But a lot of people, I mean, most people who are in creative are probably younger who are listening to this. Like they probably don't even know who they are. Like mm-hmm. I, I, like I said, a lot, a big part of life is change. So you're constantly evolving. So it's like, what, how did you, cause I know that you've clearly found your sound. I, we're talking strictly creative. Like you found your sound, you found kind of, not to box you in, but you found kind of what works for you and what you enjoy putting out. And I'll open this up for everybody as well. But like, what steps did you take to get to that? Because even you, Jacob, mm-hmm. I mean, you found a niche. You found the style. You found, I've seen a countless, and I've watched countless of videos on photography specifically, like, how do you find your own editing style and things yeah. like that? It's like, what are the steps you got to take to get there? Because, mm. you know, it's not as easy as just like, huh, I wake up and now <laughs> I'm a moody photographer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Making mistakes. Mm. Yeah, for Come sure. On. Like, you're going to make mistakes. And a lot of times, you know, we're hard on ourselves because we want to be the best in everything that we do. But you have to realize those mistakes are going to help you, you know, move forward. So, you know, you may mess up or fall and kind of like, you know, do something the wrong way or it doesn't go how you want it to go. But you look back on it and you'd be like, dang, like I did that. I'm glad I made that mistake. Then now I'm able to do this in a different way. Yeah. And so I feel like definitely being like willing to just not be the best, sometimes willing to have off days, willing to not know what you're doing. I, you know, I feel like that helps for sure. And that way, when you get to that point, you're also more appreciative, you know, of like, humble. You, yeah, and yeah, more humble as real. well. So, yeah. I think with that one, when you make mistakes, it's also learning from that mistake. Because mm. I feel like people can make so many mistakes, but they're not bouncing back or learning from that mistake. Yeah. Because they're doing they're the same stuck, mistake over and over they're again. They're stuck in that place saying, oh, why am I keep on doing this? What's happening? And in that same result. And it's just a big thing is learning and consistency too. For me, I've to get where I'm at. I guess you would <laughs> say, uh, oh, flex your stuff. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've shot basically almost every day just to get to where I'm at, just to learn. Like, what do I like? What do I like? Um, my creative eye. What do I see? Um, and also just practicing off of that consistency, like just. Pushing boundaries, like we said for Kanye, yeah, and just getting uncomfortable too. Mm. Mm. I think uh, to I think that a lot of people hear consistency. Another way to say that is repetition, like yeah. just continuing to just do 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 do. Because mm. like, let's be honest, bro. When you got like five hundred followers, like you don't have any reason to feel yeah. self conscious about what you're doing. Like you yeah. realistically, like. And I'm not saying this in a demeaning way for anyone who doesn't have X amount of followers. I'm saying this, me and my brother-in-law, we were talking about it the other day. Or when I started this podcast, I was like, bro, like, I told him, I was like, what am I worried about, bro? Like, (laughs) like my audience, who's my audience? I don't have an audience, bro. Like, what am I, we get so caught up in, like, all these little statistical crap that doesn't matter. Like, the truth is that, like, you just got to, until, first of all, you're not even going to get a following or an audience until you find that thing. So what are you wasting your time trying to, like, do this little trick that you did mm-hmm. a billion times? Like, <clears throat> just try new things, bro. Yeah, like experiment. That's the key, bro. And, like, taste and see, like, continually. Well, it's like, if you ever invested, right, they talk about diversifying your portfolio. Mm. It's, it's simple. It's just, you know, in, implementing that. Um, you ever watch those random videos that pop up on, like, your Instagram feed or TikTok, whatever you, you're on, whatever platform? And it's some dude making artwork with like, I watched with this other dude, he takes glass and he breaks it and he makes like portraits of these artists, right? Wow. How the hell did he make that? Right? Yeah. Obviously he tried things out. He was That's trying insane. painting and he was like, ah, painting's not for me. Yeah. We're working, not for me. And then one day somehow he got into glass and did it. Or those people that make like line work. I don't even know how, if, I don't even know if I'm good at that. I honestly don't know. I had to try it to see like, can I make line and yarn into, you know, or like people that write like, Andre a thousand times and make a picture of you or tag. That's thousand. crazy. You yeah. know those people that do that? Yeah. And obviously they started somewhere that got them there. And I think that's one of the biggest things with schooling. And we've talked about this before in the last podcast, but I think in school, especially when you're younger, especially when you have a low following, even when you have a big following, credits to Kanye for doing it, but like I think to anyone is you can't lose that creative push. Mm. And I think what you said is ideal. Failure is ideal, right? Mm. 
failing is like if you watch Shark Tank, if you watch anything, you have to fail, mm-hmm. right? Um, those who don't fail didn't try, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't want to fail, get a nine to five, make your seventeen, eighteen, twenty dollars an hour, and be happy with your life. You'll never fail that way. You'll do. Don't you know? Strive for one vacation a year. Strive for a four hundred one k. Strive for normal life, and that's fine if you're a normal person. I'm not a normal person. Mm-hmm. My wife painted my nails. I wear different things. Like I'm a very eccentric person. I don't strive for normality, right? And hence, I have to try different things. I fail 100%. Have there been issues? 100%. But it comes with the with the, the territory, right? You expect to lose. I'm not losing the battle. I'm not losing the, like, I might lose a battle, but I'm not losing the war, right? Yeah. So there's a longer, you know, thing there. Like, you look at these great people in the world, Bezos, Musk, these, you know, giants, and they've all failed and tried different things to get to where they are. And I think as creatives, we have to keep that in mind. Like, yeah, right now you're doing moody styles or whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's not what's going to be tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then even to stay relevant, hopefully in a year you're different. Hopefully in two years you've progressed. Or else what's the point of continuing doing what you're doing? If your podcast is forever the same, you found the perfect formula. What's the point? Right. Right? Like what's the point once you hit perfection? Right. I think the perfection as much as there are perfect perfect moments, I think perfection is an unattainable goal when it comes to your craft. I think you always are perfecting and always improving because once again, it's subjective and hence what's perfect today is not perfect tomorrow. So you have to change your style, change your formula or else why are people listening to you, right? No one wants to eat the same cookie every day. No one eats the same burger every day. You want some diversity there. Yeah. So to, to be, to play devil's advocate, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but Let's do you it. Know, there's a lot of people, <laughs> you know, and I, I am a patron of what you're saying. Like I, I practice that. Like I, that's yeah. who I am. I change all the time. But then there's people who are like, "Why are you trying to fix what isn't broken?" And then, yeah. like for example, a Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. homie has done the same thing for almost two thousand episodes. In the sense of like, I was like, he's changed like locations <laughs> and he's changed, but the format ain't changed. Like he has like, added sound effects. He hasn't like innovated the. You know, I mean, I guess yeah. he was an innovator in the beginning, so maybe that's why. But like, what do you like? What about them? <laughs> I think they're well, killing it. You know? On Joe Rogan, because I love Joe Rogan, yeah. by the way. Like, shout out Joe Rogan if you are watching. This. <laughs> <laughs> Since we shout out every single artist. Since this is part two, shout out Joe Rogan if you are watching. Nothing this. but love. I yeah. do love I your love podcast. You. I've love your podcast. Poppy. I've Poppy. watched every podcast episode that comes out Almost, consistently. Yeah, like, the only reason I have Spotify is because of you. So <laughs> it's me I'm not lie, The only reason. <laughs> not gonna lie. At first, for me, it was Joe Budden, and then I hated him. But I don't like Joe Budden. So. But with that in, in mind, I think he has changed. His, being a Christian, it's easy for me to like to reference this. It's just second nature. It's like in Christianity where we say the, the message hasn't changed, but the method has. Joe Rogan's message has developed. His, his perspective has developed. When he started, he wasn't getting freaking presidential candidates on his podcast. Now he does. And even like, Myself, I probably agree with Joe Rogan a lot more. I would love to hunt my own elk and do it all on my own. <laughs> I'm not at that point yet, but yeah. I, I love the idea of hunting. I love. He's definitely implemented his own perspective and so opposite perspectives into his podcast that I think are so interesting. And he brings different variety when it comes to like perspective. He definitely leans on a conservative some, some t- sometimes. He leans liberal sometimes. And not to get political, but he leans on those two spectrums right. and brings that in you know newness that way where he's innovating and changing i think is that a perspective where he's not bringing elon musk every single year he brought elon musk twice i believe he's brought in um bernie sanders but he's also brought in like completely opposite he's brought in ben shapiro he's brought in total right wing and total left wing i think that's where he changes things up and that's where his difference is right but once again when something's not broken don't fix it i think like the same thing i don't think you have to improve on your if you have four mics, why in your channel there, what goes to what, six or eight? I think just four. Four? It only goes to four channels? Yeah. Whatever. If you go to six, right, mics, yeah. then you have to change. Right. But if you're forever going to stick four, which is fine, then why would you need to change that? Right. Change the topics. Mm-hmm. Change the conversation. I think that's what he's doing, which I respect. He changes his perspective. And I think if you listen to his podcast from beginning to now, he's changed his opinion on things. Of course, And admitting yeah. fault on that. Like, I've admitted, like, hey, man, I'm wrong in this opinion. I was super liberal on this. Now I'm super conservative on this. Yeah. yeah. I don't agree with abortion laws in Texas, BT dubs, but 
like I could say I still agree with some things in Texas, right? right, right and right. then 10 years from now, I'm like, man, I definitely agree with this or I don't yeah, agree with this, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And like ag- accepting that like, hey, I was wrong on this or I don't know this, I think that's where he's showing his change because his podcast is essentially an intellectual podcast right. and a conversational piece, right? Yeah. The way he changes it is by changing what he's talking about and his perspective on those things. Mm. So I respect him on that. Um, so when you're playing devil's advocate, changing things are broken, I think what you do is you find what's working and then you improve on it. So like if you have a baking recipe, mm. right? And you find the perfect way to make angel's cake or devil's cake, or either one, right? I'm using, or cheesecake. Now you find out, all right, perfect. I found the perfect ratio to milk, to butter, to, to egg. Now I'm going to perfect the, 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 you know, frosting. So or now I'm so correct consistency. There's always something else to improve on. So it's finding those other things. Correct. You might what I'm perfect. saying is like the chocolate chip cookie is a chocolate chip cookie. Correct. You know what I mean? But, you know, there's like a place to make big chocolate chip cookie. Great. Right. And there's delivery. Well, okay, how about this? What's your perfect chocolate chip cookie? What's your perfect one? What company makes the perfect one? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm talking about the, the recipe like bacon. Correct, but they all make it different. Like Chips Ahoy. Versus like your mama's right, homemade. Right, right, right. Versus like a, a mama's Kroger. Classic. Or mama's Kroger. Once my mom yeah. was Brazilian. She never made yeah, yeah. cookies like that. Like yeah, I try to convince her to try to buy into high school stuff. You know when like high school's made some yeah, fundraisers? Yeah, stuff. My yeah. mom was like, I don't care. We're broke too. <laughs> you, know, like, <laughs> you know, like I don't, you know. Hey, y'all haven't been so broke y'all had sleep for dinner. Sleep for dinner. <laughs> I just want to just say I, that. If we were talking about brokenness, I was so broke that we had no power in our house once. Um, my mother has gone through, like, she's been very sporadic with her money, so we've been through, like, very good moments and very bad moments. We were at a point where we had no electricity. I lit up a candle. Shout out my mom. It was her birthday yesterday, so love you, mama. Hey. She yelled at me today because she said I didn't wish her happy birthday. Okay. But oh, I did. Whoa, I did. Whoa, I did. And I was hey, like, Mom. Canceled. No, and I literally <laughs> sent her a screenshot. I was like, Mom, what are you talking about? I, like, I was like, Mom, Dada, what are you talking about? I Dada. called Dada. you. I mean, for me. Only I Jesus think, is perfect, you know? Like, that's right. Perfect. For me, yeah. I think the thing I struggle with the most, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, there's so much random stuff, right? Like, there's so many little things that I guess we all struggle with. Uh, but honestly, I think that, I think trying to pick one thing, and I, I know mm. we relate to this, but like... Yeah, you and I, yeah. Yeah, because it's like, not to say the like... The problem isn't that I'm good at so many things. The problem is that I don't know what to decide to be good at, if that makes mm. sense. Like, I'll have seasons where I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm a go. Yeah, me and Elliot are only good at one thing. That's cap, bro. I'm very basic. Yeah. And I know <laughs> you struggle with this because I know that you've done other things. But I don't know, man. Something about that, like, um, I don't know. I guess that's a fight with, you know, creative identity, if you want to call it that. Like, mm. You know what I mean? Like, what? Who am I in the space of creativity? Yeah, and it's so hard nowadays when you see everybody doing everything. Like, everything. we live in such a creative like generation, so it's like, you know, I want to do this, I want to try this out, and so it's kind of like you're all over the place. But it's like being able to know like what are you good at, and not boxing yourself in, but still not mm. being like all over the place at the same time. So it's finding a balance, I guess. Yeah, I give major. I mean. The first question, right, before we got on tangents, which I get on tangents all the time, I verbal vomit <laughs> so much. Like, that's my go-to thing, verbal vomit. I'm going to start saying that now. Spit out. Yeah. Verbal vomit, yeah, it's verbal vomit. Like, the way I get jobs is I verbal vomit and people get impressed. Mm. So I'm like, cool. Yeah, like, you got cool guys <laughs> doing it. I said a bunch of good, wor- I said a bunch of good words and impressed people, you know, like, cool. Yeah. But um, I, can, I can dominate co- door, uh, corporate world to a certain aspect of verbal vomit. Yeah. But... When it comes to creativity, it's difficult for me sometimes because I see people like yourselves, right, that found a niche. And it's so tough for me. Like, I work with my boy Atlas, which, shout out. If he ever comes to Dallas, which I would imagine you should have yeah, him on the podcast. Yeah, i talked to him about it, yeah. Yeah, I definitely would uh, think he would be a cool person. He's definitely a creative and a creative-minded. But I work with him. Like, his logo I made, and yeah. we did merch together, and we have other plans. I mean, it's not his podcast. It's his YouTube video, so I think I have right. We're dropping a merch together <laughs> oh, nice, in nice, o- nice. October that no one knows about. So if any of his followers are watching this, we're dropping merch together. St. Atlas merch in October. <laughs> Shout out hard. for Halloween. But like we do stuff together, right? Right. And we do creative projects. And I think the difficulty is like I myself being a you know doing so much, and I have like my fingers in all. Of it. I've done photography. I've done music not to your aspect, I've sang before, but I do like the production, I've done the type of stuff, or I've done lights, I've done church work, I've done all these things. Yeah. And is I don't feel like I'm a graphic designer, even though I do graphic design mostly for Atlas, but I also do video work, I've done yeah. this, I've done that. So I find like myself more being that person where I, 
hey, I know what looks good and what feels good. I'm more of a creative director. I don't have a role for me like that yet, but when it does open up, I'm open for it. Right. And I think there's a difficulty, and I feel I'm not jealous. At, at one point, I did feel angry that I didn't, fi- like I didn't fall into just photography, or I didn't fall into just music, or I didn't fall into just videography. It's I wish blessing, I did. Bro. I wish I did. I feel like I'm good at a lot of things, right? Yeah. Like I'm pretty good, but I just... I can't commit to anything, right? And it's so that's difficult. The, that's the root. It's difficult. Like, I don't yeah. think I'm bad at these things, right? Yeah. I don't think I'm, I'm not going to say I'm better at photography than you because I haven't done photography forever. I don't even own a legit camera other than film cameras, which I think are still legit. Mm. But I don't think I own a camera anymore because I've given them all away. Um, wow. I've given a lot of stuff away, by the way. Like, Wow. I'm going to give you my number. At the <laughs> <end>. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, I mean, we all have each other's numbers now, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the jet, but <laughs> I've given away a lot of things in my life. Uh, not the best choice in life, but I have. And I've given away most of my cameras, um, majority of them, to people, film cameras or whatever. But, like, I have my film, like, you know, roll-up yeah. Kodak, whatever, cameras at home. And I love those. And Classic. Those are pride possessions. I have a whole, like, bookshelf full of, like, things and memorabilia. And I have those still. But, like, it's just, I, couldn't, I could never say I'm a photographer. I can never say I'm a musician or even though I played for like three estimates, I can never say I'm a videographer, right? And I find that's a difficulty, yet a superpower in the same way. That, yeah. uh, the, the phrase where it's like a master of, um, a jack of all trades, a master of none, but it's still a master, it's still better than a master of one. Mm. That's the full phrase. Mm. And so I took a while, but I feel better than being just a master of just one thing because at least I can do multiple things good so if I wanted to, it gives you more opportunity. I could do. I could be a photographer yeah. and yeah. still make money off of it. I could do these things. I just want to be great at it. So I want back to your orig- one of your <laughs> questions, like originally, where it talks about like entrepreneurship and creativity. I don't think I would open my own practice, probably ever, maybe. But I, I feel like I'm always going to be open to work with people. Yeah, if yeah. you want to work with me, I'm down. If that wants to work with me, I'm down. If you want to work with me, I'm down. I'm always open for a creative. If I see the creative push to it, toward like. Money's like the second thing in my mind, even though it should be the first. My wife definitely could test it should be the first. But like creative push, as long as I'm able to do it, is always the first. So like if yeah. we all said, hey, after this podcast, we all vibe with each other. Let's do a collaborative like whatever. Yeah, I'm down. That's why you said, hey, bro, I want to do my first four-person four episode. I was like, hell yeah. That sounds <laughs> dope. Yeah. Like I, sound, I didn't even know who the people were, but I was like, yeah. that sounds dope. You know, I'm yeah. super excited. You know, low key, I think that could be a weakness too. Not saying like a bad weakness. No, 100%. 100%. But a good weakness too, because I, I'm like the same way. If I see like a concept that I feel like, oh, this could actually do something, like maybe even like break the internet type, I'm like, I'm totally for it. Going out of pocket, anything, yeah. I'll be down for it just for uh, if the concept is good. That's the thing too. Like, are you. I don't know. I'm more invested with my creative gifts, right? And I say it's gifts because God gave it. Because like I didn't ask for this. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I studied certain things, but I, I didn't. Like it was gifted to me. Like I was just innate to it, right? Um, I think I'm disrespecting it by just going for money, right? I'm going for the creative nudge of it. That's why I for can't love connect for the love of it. That's yeah. why I can't connect to Drake as much, at least recently, because it's more marketability. Which once again, I don't think it's a discredit to it. There's definitely a space for it, but I gravitate towards Kanye. Once again, re- referring back to that, is because I, I, he's not going for money. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. going for the creative push, right? So I'm going more for the how can I push culture? How can I, it, like, bro, I got a tattoo the other day, um, Friday the Thirteenth, because it was twenty dollars tattoos. Nice. Um, it's a freaking triangle with an eye on my thigh right here, just to mess with people that see my, whoever sees my leg. <laughs> Because I'm when bullets. someone sees a triangle on your leg, right? Illuminati. Like, that right there. It's Illuminati, right? Oh my Jeez. Full blown. And if, <laughs> I love it. I mean, my, my, my family yeah, logo you've been is Illuminati. I think for a minute. Eyes forever. So I mean, Loki, shout out Loki because yeah. his, his is different than mine. And we're not biting each other because he has his own eye of mine. Just and Loki it. is dope because it makes sense with eye. Because Odin lost his eye from Loki in mythology. Yeah. So I'm not sure if that's what he's referencing, but that's a dope reference. Okay. But, I mean, not Marvel, yeah, but, you yeah, know, yeah. technically Marvel too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out Marvel, uh, if you're watching this. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, Fe- Kevin Feige. Huge fans. Uh, huge fans. <laughs> Kevin um, Feige, I will yeah. wash your feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love Kevin. Oh, my God. No, like, I, I think I agree with you. You shouldn't do it for the money, and you should want to be creative just for the creative. But that's when you're speaking from a place of 
I don't need to do it for the money. Mm. Mm-hmm. And this is, and I want to <laughs> go back to this because I said I was going to talk about it and I didn't. But, you know, I got an in-house creative position. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty great. You know, yeah. I get to do what I'm passionate about, mm-hmm. build another company that I'm passionate about, which is, who doesn't know, it's a CRM software company that helps on the back end for law They're firms. Hiring? Super cool. Uh, they will be, and I'll definitely hit hey. you up. <laughs> Shout out, you know. Um, but dude, Networking. like, <laughs> I feel like, like even like a Kanye, for example, like he's been pushing the boundary forever, but there was probably a level of pandering and complacency when he began. Oh, 100%. You got, you got to. You, Why? Money's important. Bro. You need to make money. You can't yeah. push boundaries if you're starving. You're broke. If you're starving. <laughs> you bro, I got a house to pay. I got exactly. I got a wife to feed. I got dogs to feed. Yeah. Obviously, that comes into the equation. I think it's more of what's the most value, right? So that's why I have a day job. Mm-hmm. So I can facilitate so can my creativity. That. That's why you have a creative job where, yes, you might have to compromise on, I'm not going to push the boundaries 100% on this creative job because- it's a company I'm representing. Right. But when it comes to my podcast, hell yeah, I'm going to push some conversations that might be a little bit edgy. I might push these things that need to be spoken on. As a photographer, yes, you might have to do a wedding where it's just standard or you might have to do the standard photography or freaking... Um, graduation pictures or something. Graduation pictures or, or headshots, right? Yeah. yeah. But that um, pays for your creative push. Yeah. And I think the issue is only when someone only foc- focuses on damn, I'm making so much money off of college photos. I'm making so much money off of uh, wedding photos. I'm making so much money off of this ringtone I made for this farm, uh, state farm. Like, if you got a contract with, like, one of the dads, it's dope. <laughs> that would be like, nice. <laughs> but would you, what, would it be, what would it sound like if State Farm reached out to you right now and was spot. like, I need a 10-second jingle? A uh, 10-second jingle. Uh, so I would have to, like, lie and say my name's Jake. Okay. <laughs> of course, everyone knows. I would just kind of have to go from there, you right. know? I need, like, a, a little beat or something, and... Some with a little snare, hi hats, you know. Hey, <laughs> hey, wait. Before I start rapping, State Farm is insurance, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just make sure it's like yeah. it's not a. Farm it's good to have company. clarity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. I'm with State Farm because I'm not with Progressive. Hey, because they always progressive. Hey. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I need new insurance. Ten seconds. Oh, okay, yeah. well, yeah, I, mean, I was actually yeah. feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you that farm state. Now imagine if like, imagine if your creative identity now is you're the farm, like the insurance guy for ringtones, right? Wouldn't that take away from your like? I feel I would feel embarrassed as a rapper. Like, yeah, I'm the guy who raps for all. You like, depend on the bag, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, that's, I, I that's what I'm bag. saying. There's but money. Like, no, I think so, What's like, dignity no, anyway? Yeah. No, but, <laughs> but I think there is a certain point. If you talk to, like, I think we say this because none of us are rich, mm-hmm. right? But like, I was watching this show that's a new show. Shout out to the show. I mean, shout out to all these people. Like, I mean, uh, at Nine Perfect Strangers. This is not sponsored by yeah, any of by anyone. <laughs> like, if anyone wants to sponsor. <laughs> I'm blurring all these. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, like, all of this is like blank. There's like no ads anywhere. Like, like none of us have logos, you uh-uh. know, uh, other than Loki, obviously. Because shout out I'll, Loki. I'll yeah, yeah. Who knows? I'm only three weeks in. Maybe I'll have a different opinion. <laughs> like, in a week wait, or two. Not even a month. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. I didn't know you that you're that, that fresh. How are you liking it, by the way? Like, I, it's I know cool. it's not, I know it's your podcast, but I'm, I'd love to ask <laughs> it. Like, how, how are you liking? Yeah, let's we interview you now. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's flip, flip the, the script. script. So tight. Yeah. Hey, since you're a Drake fan, I just flipped the switch. Oh, yeah. Like, oh. I, I'm gonna turn the six upside down and make it a nine nine. <laughs> what are you thinking? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but how are you liking? Like, I, uh, I went yeah. to corporate world a few months. ago. I've always been in corporate world, right? It yeah. kind of bounced. How are you liking going from whatever? I don't know what you were doing before you went full time creative. Now going back to corporate, how are you liking it? Like the balance? I think it's cool. I think uh, I, I made a smart, I didn't just apply for like, you know, random corporate. I, I was like, I know I'm not going to be satisfied if I do something like super corporate. Like mm-hmm. I have friends who literally just animate slow, like things for like State Farm. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I don't think I could ever do that. But again, there's jobs for everybody. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if you're $2 million right now to animate some <laughs> logos. <laughs> I'll do it for a couple months. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll, I'll, do, it. It. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do, do it for a little bit. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get the first few <laughs> checks. You know, I'll wait for like the whole two Clap minutes. Those checks, bucks, check those you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stack yeah, up, yeah, stack yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Nah, but no. For I, they're a startup company. So they, yeah. before I got hired, like two months before, they mm-hmm. had twelve employees. Yeah. I was the 69th employee. Mm. Um, nice number right there. I know it's great. <laughs> um, 
So uh, yeah. yeah, in three months they got literally got an investment group thing. Nice. What's the name of the company? In. It's called Centerbase. What is it? It's called Centerbase. Nice CRM tool. Yeah, CRM. Nice. Right, right, right. Dope. So they, you know, it's really cool. Anyways, they're the field that they're in. They're with immigration or not immigration law. They're with just law firms in general, mm-hmm. um, and small to mid sized law firms. So. I'm just making ad content for them and all that other stuff. But the cool part where it's like I get to think, I get to do something is it's a tech company. I've never worked with a tech company before. Yeah. Again, I'm looking for a day job. Probably not going to work at Chick-fil-A. I'm sorry. I just don't want to do that. But I pick yeah. a job that like would one. It's mostly animation. That's something I haven't really ventured into. Mm-hmm. I just created a video that was like over 250 After Effects tracks just because I had the. Right. Effects is, is, is beast. I had the way. time to do it. And I got the, and I was like. If I'm investing, so I'm invested in a new skill, and that's what most of it is. So it's like, yeah, I'm super proud of that video, and like getting to go on another side. Like, so I'm enjoying it a lot right now. It's really great. I love the people. It's cool. It's startup like at five thirty, at five home PM. Or do you go to the office. I go to the office. It's right Dope. here. It's like six Dope. minutes away. Dope. And it's like legit. Like four, 4 p.m. They break out white claws. Like, oh, that's fire. It's that's like fire. a startup culture. Yeah. I don't think it's startups. anyone older than like thirty five there. It's well. Real. It's been a pleasure. Damn, how long have we been going for? <laughs> it's definitely a vibe. 240. Yeah. Damn, we got to do this more. <laughs> yeah. Can we please call, do call, this more? Call I'm like down. Hustle Hangs, you know? We got to bring it <laughs> back. Let's not do it on Tuesdays and like a Wednesday. <laughs> no, I got you, bro. I got do, you. Do, do hang culture instead hang of hustle culture. culture. Like hang culture. That sounds kind of like No, can we do though. church culture? Because I Oh, uh, bro, we can go to church. I need to Hey, A little announcement. One of the episodes that is going to be coming out soon is going to be with... Three other people <laughs> who have kind of walked through what I've walked through in the last mm, year. Nope. Interesting. Yeah. It's going to be very fun to talk about them. I can't wait to hear that one and post culture. about it. Bro, I try not to be really too great. churchy with anyone. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is going to be strictly be, church. Because the church is a hustle. Yeah, even church though it is definitely be. hustled. Um, um, or you will be hustled by the church. You will be hustled. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that's for yeah. the podcast. You will be twerked. Don't so much. Post it up raw. Post it up raw. Post it up raw. I've never had it in the podcast. We should never. Oh, my God. Damn, son. We're yes, cutting it's not most today. of this, bro. It's not today. I'm already cutting most it's of this. It's not today. We post it all. I'm already cutting post it all for the views. Anyways, look, this is already out of SD. Do it for the vine. Jacob, let them know uh, your Instagram, where to find you, and how they can support you, and then we'll go down the road again. Uh, my Instagram's at underscore captured by Jacob underscore. And if you want to support me, book a shoot. Also, yeah. if uh, cash app him at uh, underscore Jacob. Oh, yeah. Uh, shots by Jacob. Uh, cash app at captured by Jacob. Another way to support him is to DM Madison Beer uh, multiple times. Amen. Just to just just his yeah, app. As a spam. Yeah. Spam. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, my name is Leo. Uh, you probably haven't heard much from you tonight. Um, Not at all. Honestly. My name is Leonardo Saint. Uh, the, at, the socials right. Uh, Saint Leonardo. The only one you'll find. That's a dope name, by the way. Uh, thank you so much. Very it's almost God, as good it's, as it's a Ninja Turtle. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, if you want to support me, you can cash at me if you'd like. Um, I have a couple things I'm doing, you know, uh, got my boy Atlas that I'm working with. He's a YouTuber, content creator. I also do Cancer Can't Kill Hearts. If you want to support, um, not myself anymore, but other cancer patients and other people that are going through the struggle, um, feel free to check that out. But yeah, St. Leonardo, you can see all my socials and all my stuff on my link tree there. Wow. So hi, my name is Cadell. I'm an, uh, an artist here in Dallas, <laughs> Texas. So to support me, um, my cash app is O D Y S S E Y Heat Odyssey Heat. What's that one right there? O D Y S S E Y H E A T Odyssey Heat. Bro, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's going towards my. That's a <laughs> make chicken. Give me the camera. That's, a, right that's there. a make chicken on break tonight. <laughs> um, so yeah, Odyssey Heat Instagram, uh, every other social media, whatever. That's where you can find me. Yeah. Cool. Dope. Make sure to follow the. Man behind the lens, Adolfo yes, Trips. He's been killing it. Um, shout out to him. I shout out to everybody. He was there. That's how good he's doing. Amazing. Shout out to everybody who's been a part of Hustle Culture up to this day. Uh, if you want to follow me, it's Andres R Tags. Um, but don't even worry about that. Just follow Hustle Culture uh, at H S L E Culture. Um, and you, uh, website H S L E Culture dot com. Uh, and yeah, it's been great talking to you guys. Uh, I hope that y'all got at least a fraction of the value that I got talking to them today. I listen to this podcast. Uh, bye. Peace out, y'all. Y'all be blessed. Be blessed. You gotta say something. Look, Cray, if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs>